Finally back recording a Eurovision video? What? We've uh, gotten to this point now. We're finally back. Um, but yes, welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where the tea is piping hot and we're always ready to spill. I'm Logan Murphy, just a gay, here with my beautiful flowery mug that I bought at an estate sale because I've started a coffee mug collection based on working at estate sales. So we've got flowers and it's beautiful and lovely. And I've got coffee because, duh. <laughs> and with my usual mug of water um, today, um, my name is Sam de Monteverde, also known as Sam DMV, AKA Anissa Longer, fellow friendly, non-binary Filipino Canadian, mentally unstable, hot mess hailing all the way from Toronto. It's been a while since I've said that. It's been ages since I've heard it and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your hairy fairy punk rock homosexual from Yorkshire. I'm Eris Envy and I'm drinking Pepsi Max because nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Apart from full fat <laughs> coke. I really fucking miss it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do not have a uh, smooth uh, rehearsed intro at all, but my name is Sindri. I'm from Iceland. Uh, I'm here. I'm here, and I have. That's COVID all we need from you, love. That's all we need. <laughs> yeah. I oh. arrived. Same, and that's all we could ask for for today. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. we are back after over a month uh, since our last Eurovision video, um, and we're finally here talking about all the songs we made it we are at the point where all of the songs are here and we're here to talk about semifinal one today um also happy one month to eurovision everyone whoop, whoop. on the day we're recording it's officially 30 days aka also 30 days until my birthday hey. because eurovision starts on my birthday this year and i'm very excited hey, happy 21st it, it, birthday logan oh thank you no it's not too bad i'm gonna be 25 so I'm not I'm not lying about my age yet. <laughs> I feel good with not lying about my age yet. But yes, semifinal one, the easier of the semifinals, I think we can all agree, the less competitive um, yeah. of the semifinals this year. I, that's a fair assessment. I it's not the one that's gonna get people violent on Twitter. Let's put it that way. Uh, very that. People will be I'd violent yeah. after semifinal two, I can guarantee, regardless of who qualifies. But if you thought we, tensions on mainland Europe were bad already, you're not ready for semi final two. No. No. <laughs> no. no. But we've got 17 songs to dive into from the first semi final, as well as the two members of the Big Five that are voting in this semi final uh, in France and Italy. So stay tuned to the end for those reactions. And then we're going to rank all these songs because we're subjective people. And I've also forced all of these people to be subjective about these songs. Hey, we all love rankings. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. What makes life fun is ranking stuff. <sighs> yes. Overall, I know I've, I've kind of uh, established that it's the less competitive of the semifinals, but how do we, how do we feel? What do we think the energy of this semi is overall thinking about the 17 songs? I think it's very split. I think it's like, <laughs> I think it's very much like either very high energy or it's like low energy folk, you know, like, ball I feel like it's very split. I don't, I don't feel like there's a lot in the middle there. Um, it's a mixed bag. It's a really mixed bag, I would say. I think it's also just a yeah. very mixed bag quality wise. Uh, a lot of mm. average songs, a couple of really bad ones. And I, in my opinion, only like a couple of really good ones as well. Um, it's uh, it's not the best semi I've, I've listened to, um, but there's definitely some stuff to talk about. 
Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, we've got nearly every musical genre you could think of represented in some way or another. Mm. Some way um, or another. Yeah. Some represented well, better than others. <laughs> some represented a lot better than others. We'll get into that, won't we? We mm, sure will. Yeah, definitely. Um I was gonna say we can dive into it unless Sam or Eris has any any thoughts overall. But I mean, I just I just want to I'm just gonna say I like music. So it's like for me, in my opinion, there's probably like I have my ranking, obviously, but I feel like there's only like two songs in here that I don't like. Oh wow! I have. Um... The, I mean, I mean, like that. I can easily rule out. I'm not like there's a few. There's a select few that I love, but yeah, I think most of them are just likes. There's only one that I skip every time I hear it from this semifinal. Mm. But there's kind of a lot what... to hate, you know. But there's yeah. a lot to be like kind of annoying the average a lot well, of annoying was, the average stuff i was but, gonna say to your point a lot of them feel in the in the middle for me where it's like mm -hmm. i'll listen to it it's just not my favorite for this oh. semi i'm just gonna say there's some that you might hate me for liking and there's some that you might hate <laughs> me for disliking because i have opinions <laughs> if you watched our australia decides video you will know that eris has very bad taste <laughs> yeah. hey it's so. gonna be so much better if we're all uh, disagreeing here. Yeah. Honestly, know, that's why we keep, that's why we keep them around. Because they're entertaining <laughs> and have bad taste. No, exactly. <laughs> bitch. Let's just do it. Let's, Let's do get it. Into it. Perfect. Semi final one, and I get to start my birthday with my queen. Ronella Hayati is opening semi final one with Secret. We all know how I feel about the song, so I'm going to go last. <laughs> well, I, I can kick things off if you want, because I love this. This is really up there for me. I think it mixes... I think it's a really good pop ballad, is the way I would put it. It's very interesting. Um, and the guy in the music video was really hot, which is not important, but still. But yeah, I really love this from Ronella. I think it's a very strong contender. I could see this qualifying. I don't know if I could see this winning, but I definitely see this on the left side of the bar for me. I'm gonna have to agree with Ares here. This is a very this is a, a huge bang to open up with. Um and seeing how the live performance was at the national at Fick at the national finals of Albania, um, I think we're in to start with a hell of a show. And I'm very excited to see this on in on the eurovision stage in torino um and i know she's gonna do great um i feel like it's gonna be memorable for sure regardless of wherever you put ranala because you know she's that fierce she's that iconic she's that amazing to me um but yeah no i'm gonna agree as well and say you know um i don't it could win it's probably not my first pick as a winner but it's qualifying and it's gonna be on the left side yeah, like I'll preface all my opinions uh, with the fact that I've only listened to uh, whatever I found on Spotify, you know, like I've not seen these live yet, except, of course, the Icelandic one. Um, but this is like this is just a really fun song. You know, it's just like it's very Eurovision in the best possible way. Um, this is the type of energy you want uh, in Eurovision. Um, so, yeah, like it, it gives you everything you want. It's not like my absolute favorite but it's definitely like this is something that i'll uh, i'll really enjoy watching live on the night and i won't be disappointed when it goes through and i won't be disappointed that it does pretty well in the final as well so it's just a really solid eurovision song you know this is what this is why we watch eurovision is for like energy like this and she's such a she's such a Eurovision fan too that it's gonna make the it's gonna make opening the performance amazing i remember when um, when lineups were released, she got on Twitter and was freaking out. She's like, I'm opening. Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just love that. I love people that are, it seems like a lot of people this year across the board are people that are very passionate about Eurovision, which is really nice to see. Not that past years, we haven't necessarily gotten that, but this year, especially like with the amount of like pre parties that are happening and the amount of artists that are actually going to them like i've seen ronella at li i think every single function that she could have been at she was at multiple national selections herself 
Like, I mean, yeah. Coming off the back of COVID-19, because we didn't have 2020 and then 2021, we luckily got to have Eurovision, but I don't know how many parties were actually able to be thrown. I think everyone's just so, so ready to like celebrate and party again. So it does not surprise me that, you know, there's a con- there's a party in literally every city in Europe for Eurovision right now. Yeah. Completely agreed. But obviously, I mean, my uh, my profile name on Twitter has been Ronella Hayati Stan account since December. So... It's no secret you love it's Ronella. It's no secret <laughs> that I love this woman to pieces. Um, I have already promised to myself it does not matter how much it costs. If she wins, I will be in Tirana next year for Eurovision. Yeah. Definitively okay. saying it. There, there are a few countries, honestly, where if they win, I'm going to go or I'm going to do my best to go. The UK is actually one of them, Eris. So, um... I think we'll we have to hope a country that doesn't have the money to host Eurovision wins, because that's the only way we're going to get Eurovision back in the UK, I'm telling you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah, I don't. I don't think we have to worry about UK winning. So, I'd like to dis- disagree. We'll talk about that when we get to semifinal two. But yes, of I think also <coughs> of the people that could, of the people in the first half, and of the people that could have opened, they picked the right person to open the show. Absolutely. Yeah. This in is a very, you open. in a very similar way to the Roop opening semifinal one last year. Like, that made a lot of sense, and Ronella makes a lot of sense in this first spot. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm more interested in, because I, n- I have no I have no qualms. I, 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 I'm very confident in seeing her qualify. My thing is going to be, where are they going to put her in the final lineup? Mm. That's kind of where I'm already looking forward to that. But I just, fingers crossed, they don't do what they did to Destiny, where they put, they put Destiny, was it second or sixth last year? Sixth. And they put yeah, yeah. um they put Angela Peristeri second. Yeah, were they intentionally they if they put Ronella there to intentionally if, kill her act, I'll be feeling. If they put Ronella second, it would be the third contest in a row where they've put Albania second in the final running order. Oh wow. And like, hi, I'm I'm definitively saying I'm very confident she'll be top ten. Y'all are saying left side of the board, I'm saying top ten. No, I feel I very that. I, yeah. I want to, in my soul, I want to say top five, and in my soul, I want to say winner. But there's a lot of really, really good songs that are competing for that. And Ronella is, it has one of them. Um, but I'm very confident in saying top 10. I feel like of the songs that have this energy, like that are competing for like this vote, because like all of these kinds of songs, you know, like certain people are mm-hmm. voting for certain types of genres, certain types of songs. Um, I feel like, at least from what I've heard so far, this might be the best, like, real, like, energetic, uh, typical Eurovision song. I feel like mm-hmm. it could gain the votes just by being, like, the best of that kind of genre yeah, category, I agree. you know? I, I think she'll have no problem with that in the semifinal. The final is where I get concerned because, mm-hmm. and we've seen it all throughout the season once Spain's selection happened, most people have put... Uh, Albania and Spain in the same category because they are very, very similar songs. And so when it comes to the final, I feel like Ronella and Chanel are going to be competing for those for competing for those votes. The good thing is we don't have like six female dance pop tracks this year. And as, as long as Ronella and Chanel don't wear silver body suits, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I think All we'll right. be fine. I think we'll be chilling. I'm not worried. Just like anything but silver, ladies. We're good, but we must move because I will be here all day talking about Ranella and we have other songs to talk about. So next up, we have Latvia, uh, Siti Zeni. The song is Eat Your Salad. Okay, so don't shoot me. I really like this. Me too. <laughs> Okay, here's what I'm going to say. Sam will know because Sam was the only person there for our Latvian selection. And obviously, I am still team Aminata Zabadogo. However, this song has grown on me so much. (laughs) Even if the lyrics are kind of silly and out there, I still think the music itself and the way this music is written is 
really it's like it's an earworm it really gets on your head it's it's enjoyable music i like the sound of it it sounds nice Mm -hmm. do i think this will qualify um in second place in second place in the running order i think the jerry is probably gonna tank this and i think it's intentional i think the jerry's are looking at this and they said okay we don't want this in the finale yeah um I also really like this. I think Logan would know from when we did Lapia. I, yep. I, I gave eight points to Cities Any. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't give them any. Yeah. So, talk so about, let's talk about <laughs> growth. Yeah. So, what really does it for me is the pocket. Like, Eris, you mentioned about the music. And I think that's what... the Having pocket is so important um, in having kind of like a catchy song. And also... Um, the lyric, the lyrics are kind of iconic you know you the first like sentence you get is already like being quoted by a lot of people it went um, viral on tiktok it like did. and that I, same like i think tiktok from now well from like last year and now is probably going to have such a massive impact on your option for the foreseeable future yeah because manaskin uh city Bulani, and some of their other songs really caught so much traction on the app last year that I think TikTok is now going to start playing really heavily into your shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you even look at songs that songs like Arcade by Duncan Lawrence and even Toy, Toy, yeah, by Netta, which both of those songs also like hugely blew up on TikTok as well. Um, so. I, I suppose, like, in that aspect, I wouldn't be surprised if it, with this song doing well. But yes, no, I really love this. I The live performance, actually, I really enjoyed as well. Because everyone that, everyone on that stage was having the time of their life. Everyone had their time at time to showcase. Um, what what really threw me off was the guy doing the split at the end, though. Like, he, he, he ends up jumping into the split once they finish. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't love this. Uh... <laughs> I don't think anyone can blame you. No. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. Nope. It's it's just it's not great. I don't know. It's who asked for this? Latvia. <laughs> Latvia. Apparently. Latvia. Yeah, they shouldn't have though. I also, know. I also want to preface by saying, oh. right before we started recording, I did show Sindri Aminata's song from this year because we were talking about Aminata. So that might have something to do with. I already, I I made my ranking before we even talked about okay. that, and it, and you'll see later. It's not, sure. it doesn't do great there. Um, sure. but it does not help to know, like, uh, to know. No, Aminata's song was amazing. Um, yeah. also her her song, um, from what 2015, Love and Jack yeah. is one of my favorites ever. So, like, of course, like, I wish yeah. we would have been able to see her perform and like an actual like pretty good artist like get a showcase instead of this silliness um could you but, imagine you know, not know, this followed world, by aminata you know the world where aminata gets through that's the world i want to live in unfortunately this yeah. is the world we do live in so <laughs> <laughs> let's let's pray for 2023 that latvia gets their head back on straight and yes. uh could you oh my god now i'm just envisioning ronella into aminata into monica liu yeah, let's, let's go. Um, I, my gay heart would cry. So would mine. Like, that oh just sounds phenomenal. Mm. Anyway, we have to talk about CT Zenny. No, I, this song, I hated this song when we talked about the Latvian selection. This was last place in my ranking in the Latvian selection. And over time, as I've listened to all of the songs that I didn't particularly love at the start, this song has grown on me a little bit. It's definitely not one of my absolute favorites, but it's fun and stupid in a way that I like. We'll talk about a song that's fun and stupid that I still don't particularly love later on, but um, this gives me 15th in the jury, but second in the televote and somehow mm. qualifying. Yeah, I, I, I also like fun and stupid if it's done well. I just don't yeah. think this is done well. That's that's my thing. Sure. <laughs> and also, uh, like, my, my day job is also, I work for an environmental 
justice organization. Mm. So like anyone that's talking about like environmental issues. And I said this in our review of the Latvian selection. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to give it just a step up for that. But like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. it's a cute message. It's whatever for me. The music video is something else though. The music <laughs> video is stupid and dumb and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> They do this like game show situation. If you like a love it. connection almost. Yeah, it's like love connection. It's so mm -hmm. stupid. And then they break into like choreo at the end of it. And then the lead singer gets beat up by this like giant guy. And I'm like, none of this makes sense, but okay. I anyway. will say the live performance of this, this group do look, no matter how silly the song and how stupid it is, I still think this is a very, very talented group of people. Yes. Absolutely. Even if the song is pure ridiculousness. They're incredibly talented. Uh, their other music is really great. Um, It's just, you know, eat your salad. Veggies and pussy, right? Veggies and pussy, am I right? <laughs> okay. Next up, Lithuania, Monica Liu, Sentimente. <sighs> I love this woman so much. I'm, I... I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, no. Let's finish your thought because I think you know. What I, you're I was gonna say I I love Monica. I've Sam and I have both loved Monica since the Lithuanian selection. At this point, this gives me like mid tier semifinal qualifier, and unfortunately, uh, my gut feeling is like top of the right side of the table for Monica. Unfortunately, in the final. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just because I think there's a lot of other songs that people are going to remember more than hers. If I could vote for this, I would vote infinitely for this because I really like this song, but it's so specific that I don't know. I really don't know how it could be top five or it could be bottom five or it could be somewhere in the middle. And I'm really interested to see where she lands because I don't think she'll have any problem qualifying. Yes, I'm very ho much hoping that she qualifies too, because this is like, spoil. This, I'm just gonna spoil it right now, but like this is like one of my tops for for the year. I don't know. This is such a standout to me. Um, just and the live performance does it really does really. I think does it such the bowl cute. cut, the bowl the cut, bowl the sparkly cut. dress, and it's just like nothing but her on stage is i love i love her presence as well. i want just to her, know her vibe her energy mm -hmm. um her quirkiness i want to know on stage is something i aspire um and just her voice overall like the the lower range oh the fact that she wrote this song too yep i'm not sure if we talked about that she wrote this song i don't um, think we did originally no no we didn't mm -hmm. but yes no, I want to good. know what rare Lithuanian bird is nesting in that bowl cut, truly. <laughs> Honestly. So, about the song itself. I'm going to be honest, this song is not for me. I don't dislike it by any degree. I think it's an okay song. But for me, I would not sit down and listen to this. I think I... there's a matureness to this that, um, without calling myself childish, I don't think I get or I don't think I can appreciate look at me i would have said i hated this when i did it when we did australia decides yeah. uh but <laughs> growth no. growth yeah for me it's just um slow music just isn't my thing it's it has to be something more if it's going to be a slow song it has to be powerful and this is more delicate and graceful than powerful i can appreciate it but i think it will qualify but it's it, it's not for me yeah, I, I love this. This is right off my alley. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, incredible instrumentation. Uh, sounds great. It, it, it got like, it, it intrigued me right from the beginning. Um, yeah, it's, it's my favorite one so far when I listen to it. Uh, I don't know. It's just like, it sounds great. It's really cool. Um, I don't know. It's just, yeah, this is just right, right up my alley. It's like, it's kind of, kind of like there's a dark element to it. But still, like it's kind of sensual. It's it's just like I don't know, just like grips you. It's really good. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely. I know, like it's not getting as much hype as like other songs in the fandom in the year of Instagram fandom. But I think it, I personally think it deserves a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this is like my 
like this is like my pick for like dark horse or like my sleeper pick yeah i feel like usually like what i lo look for in eurovision is like i feel like so much of it's so much of the same thing every single year like very similar in instrumentation mm -hmm. very similar sounds like even if you like it you feel like oh this is like something i've heard before so i love when uh acts come in and like they have something original especially in the instrumentation and like how and the production and how like how it's presented in in, in like that like sense so i just feel like this song like as soon as i started listening to it, i was like this does not sound like what i've heard before on eurovision it's original and that's why I love it. It's like, uh, it's like, it's something that I'll remember in the future because it doesn't blend in with everything else. And Lithuania does a really, really good job with that, especially of the recent years. Like I think specifically to last year on, obviously I, I think of the Roop and how just different and quirky and wonderful they were. And um, I will be honest, this wasn't my number one in the Lithuanian selection. This was my number two. Um, and the number one was also a really, really good song, Call Me From The Cold. Um, I don't think Ruta would have done nearly as well as I think Monica is going to do, hopefully. Um, but I'm still, obviously, I'm, I'm obs completely obsessed with her. And from what I've seen online, she's been, like, incredibly gracious with fans and everything like that, which is something that we haven't seen out of everybody in this Eurovision season. Michael Ben David, I'm looking directly at you. Um, but yeah, I just, abs I love, 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 love all of it. All right. We go from that to Switzerland. Oh boy. Marius okay. Bear. The song is Boys Do Cry. Um, yeah. We went from the well, king of the sad boys last year to a boy that cries this year. It's giving tears of boredom, I won't lie. I hate this. Well, it's, no, hate is a strong word. I really dislike this. I'm sorry, it's just, there's other slow ballads and songs this year. Like, for example, um, Monica Liu, like, that we literally just talked about, is so much better than this for a slow song. And I, I love where Monica is in the running order because she's flanked by... Uh, veggies and pussy and boys that cry. Yeah, like I, I I love that for her. But and I think this is on a similar page to Australia's song, um, not the same by Sheldon Riley. And I think Sheldon does it on the same topic a million times better. And yeah, Mario should be like very happy that he's not in the same semi. But at the same time, I don't think this holds a candle to other slow ballads this year. Well, the, the difficulty, too, is there is an entire gauntlet of male pop ballads this year. This is one of, I think, six in the contest this year, which is, it, it's the new uh, female dance pop from last year. Um, again, as long as all these, all these performers don't wear silver bodysuits, we'll be fine. <laughs> but this song just, when you look at, because you have Australia, you have Azerbaijan, you have Poland, you have the UK. Um, I would even put Germany kind of in this same category, um, even though Germany is a very, very different entry. Um, what about um, Belgium? I'm I was gonna say, I'm missing Belgium. one or two. Belgium kind of falls under that same category. Um, I'm just running through the order really, really quick to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, yeah, I, I, in some universes, you could maybe lump in Estonia, but it's different enough that I wouldn't. But, like, you have six or seven songs that are male pop ballads talking about a very similar subject. And this is just, unfortunately, the worst of those. I don't dislike the song particularly. I just don't love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think... It's just, it's hollow. It, it thinks it's deep, but it just isn't. Like, this feels like, first of all, it feels like, sure, like, I don't know, like, sure, the message of, like, ah, oh, men should also, sh can show emotion, whatever, it's fine. But, like, it also feels like, kind of like, oh, 
look at us men we also have problems listen to us like like we don't this message isn't even like i don't know we, oh no a white man with I, problems I exactly oh, and like, look name. at the photo like it looks like someone that's like hey i need like uh, i don't have any problems so i need to like try to find a problem that i have and sing about it and it the lyrics are extremely hollow the analogies are like how can you fit this many ana analogies into one song it's insane and all of them are extremely hollow and shallow it feels like someone is imitating what a feeling is not knowing what it is um and just has like a bunch of analogies that kind of like sure maybe makes sense but like like you use imagery in songwriting to try to like make the person that listen to it like feel that emotion. Like you're trying to drag someone into your emotional state. And this just doesn't do it. It just doesn't like, you don't feel the feeling. It feels like someone like doesn't have, it feels like someone writing this song didn't actually have this problem, but like feels like this is a problem in the world. So he's just like trying to describe something that he's never even felt before. And it mm -hmm. just, I don't know, it falls so flat and it's so, so boring so and it's so hollow yeah. and so basic. I'll, I'll also say, compared to Toot Looniverse, this just does not, it, no, it's, Toot Looniverse was like a really good, powerful, emotional ballad. This, I mean, Sindri, you said exactly what I was thinking. It feels empty and it feels like it's in this uncanny valley where it does not feel like it's, it feels like it's telling a story, but it, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. It feels like it's telling a story in a very powerful way when actually it's just, extremely cliche yeah it's it's played out it's overdone i'm no it's not i don't enjoy this song at all yeah um oh sorry, sorry i haven't had a chance i've been oh, talking sorry, about go ahead. yeah sorry uh but um i the only thing i really love about this is his tone i think he has like somewhat of a decent i think he has a decent voice this song does not do him justice though because it's it's very, I think it's way too much like in his comfort zone. Mm. Um, and, you know, he could have done so much more. Um, and I also watched um, him doing like this live. Um, and he, the thing that makes his voice unique kind of like hindered, hindered the performance in a way. Cause I, I put, I put in my notes, like his isms kind of mush up the words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's probably like, good though because yeah. the words are bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was gonna say the worst part of this all—he's a co-writer on this song. He is a co-writer. Yeah, yeah. But, oh. It's, it's just, so it's just bad songwriting. It's so disappointing coming off of last year where John's Tears was my favorite, and like it was John's Tears and Barbara Pravi last year for me, and like spoiler for later on and i'm not rooting necessarily for either country all that much france more than switzerland but yeah no it's just this is going to be the rough part of the uh the semi-final for me where i'll probably walk away for a little bit and grab some water grab a snack this is my toilet this is my toilet break song i won't lie well i have uh, yeah. it'll be it'll be this one in two uh, I don't know if we had any other thoughts on this or else we can move on. No, let's get it oh, out of here. Can, we can move on. Get the, Moving move on to the on. next yeah. one that I'm going to currently walk away because I just don't want to talk about it yet. Slovenia, <laughs> LPS, Disco. Y'all feel free because I'm going to come back and have a lot of negative opinions about this song. <laughs> I think Logan's just being a hater. I won't, I won't lie. I really like this. I think it's really cute that. Oh, tomato, like, tomato. <laughs> shut up. I think it's really nice that a band of very young talent is competing in Eurovision and not just Eurovision, uh, not just junior Eurovision. Um, I think the song is really catchy. I think it's really enjoyable. I love the band's stage present. I love their cohesion as a group. And I think they're really sweet. And I hope they do well. And I wish the best for them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it's kind of basic. It's nothing new. I feel like like it's literally called disco, and it feels like somebody that's never heard disco trying to imitate disco. Um, <laughs> I've heard this a million times. There's absolutely not a single new thing in here. The only thing I enjoyed, and which I like, feel like I don't hear a lot in Eurovision, but I really enjoyed about it, is the tempo change. 
I feel like that just kind of mm. like that put this song from being like one of my absolute worst ones to like put it a little bit higher because I love tempo changes in songs. Um, just like slow it down a little and then bring it up back with the drums. Like I, I feel like even though like the when they brought it back up, it was like kind of clunky and didn't like sound amazing when they brought it back up. It was still like, you know, I loved like they slowed it down a bit and then they brought it back up. That that was like, I thought that was fun, something new. You know, it's not done a lot because like it's very risky live to to do tempo changes. Um, it can go very wrong if you don't have a talented group of of, of people playing the song. Um, so like that's very ambitious. I like that. The rest of the song, like I said, it feels like a bad imitation of what disco is. Like you said, it's a young group of people. I feel like they might have never heard disco, but the, maybe just from their parents or something. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of basic. Nothing new. Heard this a million times before. Um, I So listening to the song more, uh, taking it in more, I'll say I still like it. Like I'll, I'll listen to it again, personally. Um, I think what really does it for me, again, is similar to like what your salad does for me in terms of like the instrumentation. I really love the instrumentation of it. I love the pocket. Um, but I will agree that it does sound like a bit of a discount disco um, rather than disco. Um, I love the bass solo. Um, I think the, sing the lead singer, um, I feel like it's it's more so like he, he probably could be like, an inexperienced uh, performer because watching the live performances 17 he, yeah he's like 17 18 um i know i know he's like the youngest one like there the youngest singer he, there uh, to my knowledge he is the only person competing at eurovision this year that is under the age of 18. okay wow. well there you go um but yeah no he i feel like he he's at that age where he hasn't like fully found his voice yet and i think you can hear that in the song he hasn't found his voice. He hasn't found his stage presence. He hasn't found his charisma. He hasn't found any of it. He uh, is 17. Get off of his back, Logan. He's representing <laughs> his country at Eurovision. And he's 17. Okay, Boy. and... Listen, there are I'm other 18-year-olds that have a lot more charisma and stage presence than he does. Listen, I'm just here for them in the green room at the semi-final when they everyone else is gonna have champagne and they're probably gonna have like Capri Suns or boxes of apple juice. Literally. It's gonna be really funny. Literally. Like, drinking, like a half liter of milk. Honestly. <laughs> no, just like it also frustrates me. A lot a lot of my frustrations have to do with the fact that there were so many fantastic songs in the Slovenian selection, and they chose this. Like, that's honestly where I'm a little bit more... I'm more frustrated at the country of Slovenia <laughs> than <laughs> them specifically. Hey, it's not but their like, fault they will vote for, you know? I, exactly. And they made... Well, and I also have to give them props because they made it through this, like, entire pre-qualification. Like, the qualification for Slovenia started in, like, I think September. Oh, so wow. they've been competing with this song since, like, September or October. Um, cause they entered this like, um, specific contest for new artists, um, and made it all the way through to the final and won. So oh, like man. props to you in that regard. However, just the, like the music is fine, whatever. I have not seen a single performance of this song where I have felt any sort of emotion from the lead singer and he just feels blank in the face the whole time. And yes, I understand he's 17 but I'm also here to give my completely unqualified opinions on <laughs> all of these songs. And that's just how I feel. Yeah. I don't hate it, but you know, it's, it's nothing special. This is the one song. There are two songs this year that every time they come on, I skip them. And this is one of them. I don't even think that's fair <laughs> compared to what I know what your river song probably is. I don't even think it's Take, fair. take a wild guess. I'm curious. Oh, Bulgaria. No. Never in a circus. Wait, what? Nope. No. <clears throat> nope. Nope. We'll get to Bulgaria. Um, no, so the you other think, no, 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 no. Let's get it together. You think this I think I think Intelligent Music Project is I think Intelligent Music Project is better than LPS. Yes, absolutely. We'll talk about nice. it. 
not. Wow. Oh, also, um, for those of you that don't know, LPS stands for Last Pizza Slice. Um, which I makes me one. dislike them even more. I'm going to be they really are 17. Honest. Okay, and... There don't you know. submit yourself to Eurovision if you're not ready for the critiques. Anyway, because I need... A 20-something year old, something year old from Arizona might just read you to Phil on a podcast. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Every single time this song pops up, I will read them to Phil. I feel like knowing that they're that young makes it all make sense even more. It yep. really does feel like young mm -hmm. people imitating what music should sound like. They're all still in high school. But, but like... You know, it's just lacking in any originality, except for the tempo change, but I still stand by it. The tempo change is good. Here. The tempo change is good. I'll give it that. So that's why it's not the worst one. Well, let's let's move on. To Ukraine! Hey. Kalush Orchestra, Stefania, not the original winner of the selection, but that's a whole other can of worms I don't want to open today. Kalush Orchestra. I, I I said it before in the Ukrainian national selection, but and I'll say it again. I love it. I don't love it for the drama that they went through. Um, all of the bullshit that they gone the through this year. <laughs> all of the bullshit that happened <sighs> during the Ukrainian national selections. Um, but I love this as a song. I think it's I think it's solid. I again, I think they have the pocket. Oh, also for those of you that don't know, I I believe the singer is also was also part of um Goe from the last two years. So yeah, so this is his third time in a row at Eurovision. Um, because he yeah he was with uh, Goe for Solove and also Shum. I think yep, Igor, I, Igor something is his name, I Igor, think. Igor um, didn't shook or something like that. Something like that, yeah. I just think I love that they've written a song about Greece's entry from last year. I think that's really nice of them. <laughs> <laughs> last dance! <laughs> last dance! So this song's actually about um the rapper's, like, mother. Yeah. And I think you can kind of hear it in the chorus too, where Stephanie, uh, Mama, Mama, Stephanie. Stephanie, Mama, Mama, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah the, the song is really, really powerful if you look at the lyrics. Um, this is still not one of my absolute favorites. I do really like the song more than I did the first time that I listened to it. Um, my biggest thing is I don't love the pacing of the rap parts still. It's just, it doesn't necessarily connect with me but the lyrics definitely connect with me especially given what's been going on in ukraine and there will be links below to donate to ukraine please continue to do so because they're still fighting a war um but the chorus is what really pulls me in every single time eeyore just his voice is just phenomenal just all of that that draws me back into this song um but yeah it's it's, it's not one of my favorites but i do like it yeah, I. This is such a conflicting song in that sense because I agree with you. I think the rapping is absolute. It's just not good. It's it's it, it doesn't belong in this song, in my opinion. I feel like everything about it is good except the rapping just brings brings it down. Like it just yeah. It's not. It's very average rapping. There's nothing special about it. Nothing special about the flow, uh, the energy. N there's no charisma in the rapping. It, like, it's just average rapping. Like you know, right in the middle of a really cool song, like ex excellent instrumentation production. Um, the vocals are amazing in the chorus. I love the chorus. Um, the flutes, uh, again, Ukraine just loves the flutes and I love it too. You know, it's, like, it's the same guy three years in a row. Yeah, it's just, so. it, it sounds amazing, but the rapping absolutely brings it down from being like an excellent uh, selection to just being like pretty good um like it, i enjoy big parts of it and the good thing is the rapping isn't long um especially yeah. the second second uh rap verse is like super short so like we you don't have to like it's not like constant rapping throughout the song it's mostly chorus it's mostly instrumentation um yeah. but the rapping really just does not help it out um but you know again ukraine doing amazing with instrumentation and uh 
and Eurovision and, and continuing to do some original stuff. Like last last year's uh, uh, song was like, is again, one of my favorites ever. Um, so this, this does not live up to that. Uh, but like I said, really good instrumentation. The, the intro is really cool. Um, but rapping, that's just, like, I don't hate rapping. Rapping can be uh, incredible if it's done right. But this is not done right. This just could be anybody doing anything. You know, I could bring a pencil and paper and write a rap and it would be like this, you know, and I'm not a rapper. You know, it's just, it's I, just average. I would like to see it, Sindri. I would like to see it. <laughs> The uh, semi final uh, two, we're gonna we're gonna hold you to it, you know, right away. <laughs> I, okay, so um so as far as my opinions go for this song, I'm completely on the same page as you, Sindri. I think this song had the potential to be even a front runner, it had the potential to be really beautiful. I just think the rap does no favors for it. Like the instrumentation is gorgeous, the main vocal is gorgeous. I love the um I love all the flute. Um the person playing the flute is in, like just insanely talented because for the past three years they've had really amazing songs. Are you tired of your phone being dry? What the fuck was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sam? An Sam. ad popped up on my phone. <laughs> you monster. That's um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, but <laughs> so I'll get back to what I was saying. Yeah, the, the rap is the thing that is holding this back from being probably my favourite overall. I do, however, think this will qualify, and I still yeah. think this will do well. I just think the weird Ukrainian Eminem is probably not needed. Yeah. yeah, I also think, like, the with Eurovision Song, like, people are not gonna, people are not gonna dissect every single part of it while watching. They're gonna remember the good parts. Uh, and that's the, like, the, the key to having a good Eurovision song is not necessarily having the most balanced, perfect song overall. It's about having the best high moments and the moments that people remember um, because people are listening to these songs quickly. They will then only watch the small little clips and then they will vote. So it's mm -hmm. the songs that like stick in your memory with some, with some like excellent, like good parts. Those are the songs that will do well. And this song does have that. So yeah. the, dissecting the whole song it does bring it down the rap but i feel like when people watch it they will remember the the good parts and uh that's all really all that matters yeah sorry sam that you're the only one <laughs> that likes this song I'll a stand, lot i stand by it honestly yeah i mean i, I like the song a lot but it just has yeah. a glaring flaw i i do agree with y'all i do think it'll still do well um but yeah. And the guys are just phenomenal humans. So honestly, I want to see them do well. Uh, I will say to your point earlier, Sindri, about the charisma in the rapping, there is a lot more charisma in the live performances that we've seen um, than just in the studio version. Um, so that problem is is uh, is dealt with a little bit, but I do still agree with, with what you said. And what, yeah, just very overall energy. Things. You know, yeah. it's very different energies. It feel, feels very disparate, like the the everything else and then the rapping. It just doesn't feel like it's all connected together. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, we're here. Next is Bulgaria. Oops. Intelligent music project. The song is Intention. The very first song we got this year for Eurovision. Unfortunately. This song made me angry. Oh, um, I was listening to it and I was getting mad at how just like how can you create this song and just like proudly put it out there? I don't know. It just feels like it feels like it was created for like a cartoon or something or a kid show, uh, especially with the chorus. It just feels like uh, an annoying song you would hear when like watching cartoons as a kid, like in a bad way. There are, of course, some good songs in that sense. This is like a bad. Uh, it's just very unoriginal. It's supposed to be a rock song, but everything is so muted. Like the guitars sound awful. The drums sound awful. Everything sounds awful within it. And with a rock song, you want to be like hit with with like energy. And it feels like everything here has just been like put in a box and like under under a bed and like we're trying to listen to it. You know, it's just it's just 
painfully average. Like that was what annoyed me with it was not like it's aggressively bad in the sense of like I can hear all the flaws about it. It's just painfully unoriginal, painfully average. There's nothing here that I'm that is that is new or original or good. It's just like that was what made me angry. It was just like I'm just like how how can you how can you be a musician and create this and be like yeah I did it. I'm like go back to the same page. page. So this gives me like kind of Bulgarian version of Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters. We will not be doing Dave Grohl this day, Oh, that's. I that's, know yeah. it's major that's disrespect right. to Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl, I'm so sorry. You're a lot better than the Intelligent Music pro- Project. Um, but yeah, it's oh, eh, it's okay, and it kind of has me disappointed. Same, same with Sindri. It has me disappointed because oh, you 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 had a lot more time to kind of think through the song you want to represent your country for this year at Torino um and you chose this um i respect that you submitted a song immediately you know um <laughs> but they were confident gal like you 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 <laughs> you go into a test it's not the kid that turns it in first that's going to get the best grade you know check your work make sure it's good Make sure you look at the last page. Like, don't, you don't leave questions open. Like, this is what that feels like. It's just like... Yeah, it's like, do you truly... Really, it's like, I, do I, you truly really believe that's the best thing that you have ever submitted kind of thing? Yeah. Like, I what, have, when I listen to music, like, I'm when I, when I hear really bad songs, I, I would rather hear something that's really bad and kind of funny then listen to something that's just like painfully average and painfully unoriginal. At least something that's really bad is usually at least like original because it's so off, you know. This is just there's just I don't know that that was that that's why like the I just hate when music is so basic and so unoriginal that you're just like why was this made? Why is this a thing? It gives absolutely nothing to the universe. Also, I hated the video. I hated the music video. I have, right. I'm just going to interject. This is my fort, like 40th. This is my least favorite song this year. And I want to support like rock and alternative music at your ocean so much. I wouldn't wipe my ass with this song. It is fucking atrocious. Like, like Sindri said, it's so ridiculously mediocre. It's so middle of the road. That it's not even like bad in a way where it's quirky. It's just bad, and it make it tries to mix like garage rock and then have this like power metal breakdown with the um, guitar solo. It doesn't earn that solo. That solo does not deserve to be there. It's just no. It's bad, and the lyrics are just so. I don't get it. I don't get the lyrics. They mean nothing. It's empty. It's the absence of a song. And I'll the, talk about the music video because the music video is so stupid. If they were just like performing in that big white room, I okay, I could get it. That's very like yeah. mid noughties rock band, dad rock. But then there's just all these visuals that don't make sense. There's a woman walking very powerfully through a field, achieving absolutely nothing, much like the song. No, it's um, like, yeah. it's like, no, because that's supposed to be like a video game. There's like this guy, this boy that's playing a video game, and the girl's part of that game. It's never. I, I don't know. Yeah, this song is definitely not in a safety zone because there's no way this is fucking qualifying. It, I feel like it's playing for the safety zone, not for the Eurovision win. Yeah, and thing is with Eurovision, you've got to send a song that will win. As we've seen with the UK, the UK keeps trying to send songs that will at least place on the left side of the board. Uh, this feels like this is just trying to qualify, and you need to you need to aim for the stars, even if you land on the moon. But this. Mama, this isn't even getting like ten feet into orbit. It's bad. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's uh, it, it like I, like you said. I I also I I like rock. You know, I like alternative. Like this is this ruins the name of those genres. Like this is what when people say they don't like those genres, like they think of music like this, which is just like an imitation of what that could be. But it's just it, it's like I said, it's just offensively unoriginal. I also want to point I think, out. I think it's safe for it. Oh, sorry, Logan, go. It's okay. Um, 
So I don't like this song. I want to clarify. I don't like it. I have found myself singing the chorus of this song at times when I'm not listening to the song. But I don't like it. I Mm -hmm. just want to clarify. I like it more than disco. But I don't like it. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. A song can be catchy but still be bad, you know? Uh, Yes, and and that's how I feel about it. But the melody is just so bad. Uh, It's just very wishy-washy. It really, it's not... It sounded like I said earlier. It sounded like the the intro for like a cartoon that would like make me angry that it came on. You know, I was like, no, yeah. I, I. Why does this one have to come on now? I have to wait until the good ones come on again. Like, mm-hmm. just, you know what? Uh, it reminds me of um like eighties and nineties cartoons that have tried to have those very like metal or like rock and roll um intros. It sounds like that. It sounds like the introduction to a cartoon that would probably be a good cartoon, but just has the shittest theme tune. Yeah, because it's muted, like it's supposed to, like like they're scared the children will be if it's too loud that the like you know it can't be too loud so the children can hear it. You know, it feels like they muted in that sense. You know, this is like so there, there's no punch to it. It's so like, even though like it feels like there should be no change or whatever, it still feels like it's all on the same level, on the, all in the same like. There's just it goes nowhere. I don't know. We we we've probably said every bad word about this song, so I, it's probably <laughs> let's move on. I was gonna say, Sam. I think you had something, and I cut you off. But uh, no, I was on. gonna say, I was gonna say, I think it's safe for us to move on. <laughs> oh yes, I think it's very safe for us. To yeah, move. I feel Let's like this has that. been kind of brutal. Oh, a good song. Great. Okay, great. It's the Netherlands. Stien. The song is De Deep De. Oh, a good song. I love it. <laughs> Gen Z representation. You love to see it. <laughs> Can't yeah, really I think use. this is I think this is beautiful. The guitar sound yeah. really good. Uh, the I uh, you know the the the, the uh, singing is is great. I think I think the language really shines through. Uh, uh, the touch sounds great. It's super spacious. Uh, like it feels very big, even though it's like not super loud. It feels like because of like uh like the echoes and like it, it feels big like it really really i feel like this will really fill the arena when it when it's uh performed live so like this will be a great like even though it's not like super loud it will really like fill the the li- the, the live performance will be amazing it will really fill the arena i feel like this will be like like an emotional performance i i just feel like this, this will be like a really good song to see on on, on the night um i really like this and especially coming after Intelligent Music Project, she got a oh, phenomenal yeah. running order placement. Um, yeah. So sh- this is also the first time that the Dutch language will be sung at Eurovision since 2010, uh, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, and the, she's written, so the title translates to The Depth, and it talks about, you know, the sadness and loneliness that we all carry within each one of us. And you get that from listening to this song. It's 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 a masterpiece in every possible way. And, like, there's a lot of good music this year. But honest to God, don't be surprised if we go back to the Netherlands next year. Right. Yeah, if no. it, it really, like, when you say what the song is supposed to be about, like, it feels like that when you listen to it. Like, it really feels like somebody, like, kind of yelling into a void you know like uh yeah. it, it's it like i said it's like it's spacious but kind of in like an isolating way you know it's spacious yeah. because nobody is around no nothing is yeah. around so it kind of like it's like somebody just like yelling into a cave or something like it, it it's like it just sounds amazing in that sense yeah i think she ha- i i also like put in my notes like i feel like she has like a winning tone i feel like the tone of her voice can easily like command a room and can kind of like stop the world and have everyone just focusing on her. Mm -hmm. Also, we have special guest, Louis Thorpe. Yay. (laughs) Welcome in uh, eight songs in. Glad to have you. You know, I, um, I love making a dramatic mid mid episode, so I thought about not bringing you in. I'm gonna be really honest, but I'm very happy to. I I I would, I wouldn't have, 
you know, if you if you did that, I, I, I would have been like, OK, fair. fair um, I Sorry, am I able just to get my words in about this song quickly? Because I'm Completely. desperate for a piss. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, this track is not it for me. I just, I think it's too, once again, don't roll your eyes at me, Logan. You know I'm my rolling my eyes, Eris. Says the person who doesn't like disco. You're just jealous of them because they're young. <laughs> No, I could I, shade them. I could shade the fuck out of you right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, for me, I just it's maybe a bit too dreary and sad, and I don't know. I don't know what it is for me. It just doesn't click with me. Maybe it's the same thing as uh, Monica Lou, where it's maybe just a bit more mature than what my taste is, because apparently I have nothing but vapid, awful taste, according to Logan. Yes. As we saw with Australian designs. Yes. But yeah, I am really happy to see Dutch represented because it's been too long since we've had a Dutch song at Eurovision. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe just songs with Dutch lyrics don't are uh, as popular because if you, I don't know if anyone here watches Drag Race Holland, but Drag Race Holland has had two seasons and only one song with Dutch lyric. <coughs> Was there only one? Yeah, it was minor, minor, my or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's just not for me. But I'm sure this will do well, and I'm sure it will be extremely popular. But I just know for my taste, uh, it's, it's not mine. That's sure. totally fair. Right, I've got to go. I feel like if this right kind now. of music isn't your t cup of tea, then like you know, this is not going to be your cup of tea. Uh, you and know, this, this, and this, this is, is right up my alley. You know. And this is the cup where all opinions are valid, even if I think they're not good. <laughs> it's nice to have a balance though it's nice to have a balance of the, right, the right opinions and then Eris's opinions it's, mm. it's a good it's good balance uh, <laughs> do we have um, more thoughts I'm, I'm not sure if Sam's told you I'm literally live reacting as we speak. So once we get move on to our next songs, I'll start playing them off on mute and then I'll give you my live opinions. Okay, I'm on board with that. Honestly, that's kind of fun. <laughs> but um, do we have I, more? Is, is, is I Sam, think we're good to move on and I feel like okay. Ares is purposely not here because they don't want to talk about the next song. Maybe. I don't even I don't remember what the next yeah. song is. I'm gonna be real honest, but it's Moldova. Oh, Moldova! Yes. Oh boy, we're here. It's Moldova. Come through Zub. Polar Express. Oh my God, I hate you. Um, <laughs> Zobsi's dub and Frati Advahav. The song is Trenutul, or yeah, it translates to train. Wow. Specifically, one that goes from Chisinau to Bucharest. Yes. Kissing now. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna be really honest. I don't love this song. It's grown on me. I still don't like love it, but like it's kind of catchy in a way that I hate myself for. Um, but I don't I don't love it. And I hope it doesn't yeah. qualify. But like I I wouldn't I don't hate listening to this song. That's what I'll say. Like, maybe it's better live, but the production was absolutely awful when I listened to it. It was so loud and so obnoxious and abrasive. Like, I felt like my ears were being assaulted. And not, like, it's I love not. loud music. I, I love when... I love loud music. Like, if loud music is produced well and sounds great, uh, then it's absolutely amazing. I, I learn, love turning up my, you know, speakers to the highest and just like, like listen to really loud, fun music. But this just, the production is so bad that it feels like it's punching you in the face in the worst possible way. And I don't know. And there's nothing else good about it. You know, it's just loud. It's just abrasive. There's nothing to, nothing like to grasp onto, but maybe it's better live when like the production doesn't matter as much because it's a live performance. Uh, then at least like the the sound people of Eurovision can control it, and not your like horrible producer that you've got from some like weird basement. Uh, it's just not some weird basement. Not the weird basement. This feels it's like they just like, hey, my uncle, me. hey, my 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 cousin knows how to produce. You know, he said it. You know, on, you know whatever, and they just oh brought it to him and he about it, but he only has GarageBand or something, and like doesn't know how to really tune his on. Like this is. Just... <laughs> 
it, it was it was a bad lesson. I did not enjoy it. I was not as angry about it as I was for the Bulgarian one because, like, this one is more like, how? Like, why, why is this happening? It's more confusing. While the Bulgarian one wasn't confusing at all, it was more just like I was angry by how average it was. Um, but you know, why? Well, again, like, how, this this is supposed to be music, and it feels like it's just like it's, the production is so 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 bad. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it's some there's someone in this group are it's the third time being in competing in your so Zdobsi's dub is has now competed for their third time in three different decades oh wow so they competed i believe in 2000 it's either 2004 or 2006 i don't remember and then they again were- in 2011 and now they're competing in 2022 i believe they were one of the first acts to ever represent moldova were they I believe so. Mm-hmm. so I actually want to, I'm going to fact check that real quick because I'm curious, but... Yeah, please do, because I think I had that on a live stream, so I might... Okay. They were, they were the first act to represent Moldova in 2005. I think, well, with, I think with a song like this, um, it's all on the performance. Um, I think we've, we've seen these types of songs in Eurovision where it's... Oh, I, I I don't want to say like um, oh gosh, it's just I can't take this stuff seriously until I see the performance, and um, if the performance is not all that great, then I mean, as as Cindy said, the production value on the actual track itself is awful. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about this. Mm-hmm. So initially, I really like this, like from an. Logan's giving me the eyeball again. Initially, I did like this because I thought it was very different. It was quirky, but still good because there are some songs this year that I think are just quirky for the sake of being quirky. Give uh, off a banana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I will say is I then saw the live performance of this and it dropped really far for me because they've done this weird revamp where they're trying to make it a rock song. And I hate that vehemently because I think how it is as it currently is works for it because it plays into this like quirky like folk song which makes it more likable makes it more pleasing this is a rock song terrible complete like it's the worst idea ever it should stay in its original form and i really hope they don't perform the revamp version because if they perform the revamp they're not going to qualify and their chances of qualifying already were like already up in the air no I will say that I love the instrumentation and I think maybe the lyrics are a bit silly, but I mean, that's not the first we've seen this type of song at Eurovision this year. I think this is just a earworm for me and I do enjoy it. But um, no, please don't perform the revamp or you will lose besties. I don't think they were going to win regardless. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't think there's any universe. I don't think there's any universe where they qualify. Yeah, Bye. like I feel like the bones of this might be okay. You know, there might be something yeah. to work with somewhere in here. Uh, they just did not have the correct people working on it. Like, it, like I said, the the production value is just really bad, uh, and it kind of like ruins the experience. That like it could be fun. Like I think that like when it started, I was like, hey, this could become fun, and then it just kept became louder and louder, and and. Like with the Bulgarian song, everything felt really muted and at the same level, and that was what was bad about it. With this one, it feels like, you know, they they just, like, they recorded each part, and they just had them on different volumes and didn't, like, mix it all together and and master it and just felt like, you know, it felt like an unfinished song that was just, like, abrasive and loud and uncomfortable to listen to. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, I'll agree with Eris and say that I really do, like, the... Music, the instrumentation, like I really enjoyed, like the the violin and the the accordion playing together and like harmonizing at a couple of points. I appreciate the energy; sounds like a great, t- a decent time. Um, it's just you know, it's they're mm, having fun on that train. They're having fun on <laughs> that train. Um, not to mention the guy forgot forgot the carpet. So, um, right. Mm. Well, trains uh, are great, you know. I love trains, but you know, song doesn't do them justice. Drops of Jupiter, am I right? 
I hate you, Logan. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, let's 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 go. So this actually is the end of the first half. So at this point, we're gonna get a break, and then we get to start the second half with Portugal. Ah, uh, Mauro, saudade, saudade. I My. I love this song so much. Yeah. <laughs> My opinions have changed from when we did Festival de Cansao. Oh. Um, yeah. Because I love it even more than I did. Like, I, the live performance for... It's the live performance that did it for me. Because I had no idea that it was five women. It was, like, going to be, like, five women singing. Rather than just, like, the one. Because I'm like, you know, if it's just Maro herself... Um, then I'm like, uh, it's okay. It's, it's nice. It's cool. I'll listen to it again, but it's not, it's not up there. Um, but seeing like all five of them sing together kind of just amps it up even more. Um, cause they are so in sync with each other. The unison's tight, the harmony's tight. Um, they can blend very well. The songwriting is everything to me. Um, I don't know. I wrote like, I, you you said it about fest you said it um during festival the cancel logan but i put it in my notes i put masterpiece like this is it's very well written i i personally loved it from the i think the intro is absolutely beautiful like the the instrumentation in the beginning it, it gives kind of phoebe bridges vibes uh, at least like her last album uh in the best possible yes. way it's absolutely beautiful and not not in the sense that it feels like an imitation because it doesn't sound exactly the same but it gives those same like it's like distorted kind of distorted but like it's just beautiful they the singing is beautiful at first the transition um in the chorus i was like i didn't know if i was on board with uh, i felt like i don't know if i love the beat coming in um but then i got on board it just God got better. It continued to be amazing. Um, the bridge is great. Um, the language change in the second verse it was absolutely beautiful, and I loved it. Uh, I love when they mix and match with languages on Eurovision. Um, it just felt like a just it's just a great song. This is something I would listen to just again, even if I heard this not as a Eurovision song, because often like I think about Eurovision music aside from other music, like. I judge it differently. I think about it differently because it's just a totally different thing to me. But this is something like if it popped up on just like a suggested thing on Spotify or whatever, I would just think like, hey, this is, I love the instrumentation. This is like something I would listen to regularly. So I don't know. I just really, I really, really, really love this. Don't shoot me, but I don't like this. this, this I knew also, you wouldn't. No, no, I knew you wouldn't like this either. This is not your style of music, and I respect the hell out of that. Yeah, it's I totally it. valid, you know? It's just not my taste. Um, I can still say it's a good song, and it's really beautifully written. It's just the pacing of it is just really slow for me. Um, not to say Portugal hasn't sent other slow songs before that are beautiful, because um, Love is on um, my that was side. literally I, that was literally my, one of my favorite songs last year, and I'll also say uh, I Amar Dois is, is one of my favorite songs as well. Um, uh, I think uh, I might have just butchered the name of that. Amar uh, Pelos Dois. Yeah, okay. Pelos Dois. Um, my Salvador favorite. Sobral, if you ever become single within the next two years, please call me. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, um, so I've just given this. So listen, um, the one I, I, <clears throat> I think it's similar. Similar to how Sindri said, I kind of don't like the change of pace at the chorus, but like I love like the, like at, in the first verse particularly, it's so dreamy. I love that um, the harmonies with like the different singers. I love that. Um, it's just the, yeah, the uh, like. The, when the chorus came in, it took a change of direction. I was like, oh. <laughs> and it, I don't yeah, know. It probably takes me a while. Yeah. yeah. He'll probably take me a while to be like, okay. Um, but yeah, great song. <laughs> it did kind of feel like, hey, this is for Eurovision, so we have to have some kind of like change in energy. Uh, but I feel like it, it wasn't maybe the correct change of energy. That's like my only... Um, like critique of the song is I feel like 
that wasn't maybe what I would have done with that song at that point. Um, but it's still like absolutely beautiful. And I feel like uh, the, the singing style as well is like very different from uh, anything else we've been hearing uh, in this, at least in this setting and what I've heard in Eurovision in general. Like if it feels like there's something original about how, how, how they're singing and how they're like directing their voices. Um, so, you know, I just, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. it you know? Also, I'm, I have to throw out there, not that it has anything to do with like my perception of the song. Actually, it kind of does for me because uh, I've said it about a couple songs in Serbia, but um, this is one of like the only songs in like any national selection this year in that has like a very odd set type signature. It doesn't have your typical like four four kind of thing, which is basically like most of these songs, if not mm -hmm. all. Um, so this is in six, four, um, and it's grouped into like four, four, and then two, four. So it's yeah. like a one, two, three, four, one, two, and you can kind of get that in the flow of the song. And I really <laughs> like it for it because you don't really get the whole, like, oh, how am I supposed to group to this? Cause they, cause Maro and there, I know there's another co-writer for the, for the song too, but they have written it so well and, you know. I, I I love it. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, it's that's such a good point. Like it does really feel like uh, the the pacing of it and 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 how it's structured is is different from most of the songs that usually go into Eurovision. It's just like it gives the it gives it a fresh feel that kind of grips you, especially in the in the midst of all these other songs. This song does it feels different, and maybe people don't like catch it why it feels different. But like you said, like it's 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 small things like that and, and just the construction of the song that like you might not notice when you listen to listen to it but like your brain notices and it, it takes notice of that you know well and it's interesting as well because you know we have like there's kind of two major like genres that are highly represented in eurovision this year one of them i talked about earlier being the male pop ballad um and the other one being this sort of like dreamy folk but also like pop situation. And mm -hmm. we're going to see two more songs in this half of the semifinal that fall into that same sort of realm being both Iceland and Armenia mm -hmm. and this Greece. Is... Actually there's, there's four. Um, but then I also look at some, um, I look at a song like Cyprus, which we'll talk about when we do semifinal two. Um, I, I, you could include North Macedonia, I guess in that and Montenegro to an extent but like of the of the songs in this like genre class um one i think it is going to work very well in her favor that she's the first one that people are going to be hearing um and i think this is also one of the more well done of the genre for me i would probably put did Didi in this sense um, i would also put netherlands yeah now that i yeah. think about it I do think that for the reason that we see so much representation of this sort of genre and style, that that vote is going to be really split, much like we saw how the Pop Diva vote was split last year. And it's really going to affect the final outcome, I think. Oh, yeah, because mm. there's, what, five songs of a similar genre. Yeah. Because most of them are goal. pretty good. Like, it's good quality of those types of songs. It's not like it's easy to differentiate, like, the quality wise, yeah. you know? Like, all of those songs are pretty close in my ranking oh, for this. I would even, I time. would even, I would even throw Monica Liu in that mix. Yeah, actually, I was going to say that. that. I, I think about it. it. It's all, I was, it's I was lucky thinking of like, um, Mia Dim Dimsic as well. well like, oh Jesus Christ! You're oh my God. okay. We have to yeah, move on from Portugal like, because the next up is Croatia. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> dreamy folk pop is like this entire semifinal work. Okay. Um, Mia Dimsic, the song is Guilty Pleasure. Um, unlike certain Eurovision reviewers, her name is not Maria, it's Mia. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, <laughs> yes, I did just call her out in our podcast. She's never going to see this, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> I like the song. I think I like it's it. nice and pleasant and lovely. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's kind of where I am with this too. 
Um, I I remember when we did Croatia. Um, I I love like I guess I loved it for the national final, but I like it for Eurovision. She is severely hindered by the fact that she's going right after Maro. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. it's two mm-hmm. songs this- in a row that are the same vibe. This feels like a forgotten Taylor Swift song. It's a lot of lyrics. It feels like a bit too many words. She's putting so much emphasis on the lyrics as well. It feels like she's really trying to make sure she gets all those words in there uh, and trying to remember everything she's supposed to say. It just feels like, it doesn't feel like it flows perfectly. It's it's like, no, it's, she's not really extending on any of the words. It's really just like, I don't know. It feels like someone's singing a story, but not in the not in like the best possible. Like Taylor Swift does it really well. I feel like this is someone trying to imitate that. Um, it's not awful, but it's just not great. I don't know. It's just it's it's very middle of the pack for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a Taylor Swift ripoff for me. It's. It feels like it. It, it sounds like five minutes of songwriting. <laughs> just yeah. copy and paste and copy and paste and copy yeah, and paste. Okay, yeah, done. It's, it's, it's someone's associated on like paper and they try to figure oh. out how they get all those it's words. Not the, the free song. word association. <laughs> not that. <laughs> I love this. I love the the performance itself, though. Like the performance is really really good. Yeah, like the 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 guy that's there just dancing around on stage with her. I the guy really doing full on acrobatics while she's singing about guilty pleasures. Like, sure, it, it it's it's difficult because I just don't think it's going to stand out. I also yeah, I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark and say this is not something that Eris likes. I like this. Whoa, what? <laughs> this is I. No, I really like this. I think it's a really sweet song. Um, I do agree that at some points it's a bit too wordy and maybe the staging is a little bit much. Um, everyone's comparing her to Taylor Swift and I'm just like looking at this picture of her we have up now. Yep. And it's similar to the way Taylor posed on the uh, cover of her Fearless album, which is really making me laugh. <laughs> oh, one of her other <laughs> albums, I can't remember which one it was. Oh, me and my guitar, That's there we go. Yeah. Which, very that. No, I think it's a really there sweet she is song. There's a guitar, you know. <laughs> Literally, uh, I love the rhythm, of, the rhythm of it. I love the, uh, I love the bleh, word, word spaghetti. I love her guitar playing. Like I said, it is a bit wordy, and it could have probably done with maybe going through like an editor. But I think it's a really sweet singer songwriter song. I really hope the best for her. Is this a win- winning song? Probably not, but I would still really like to see this qualify. I'm honestly concerned about her qualification. Now that I'm looking at how many songs in the same genre are there, I honestly, it's not the worst of this genre for me personally, but it's not the best by any yeah, means of the it's, imagination. It's down there. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like I said, put all the put all the lyrics of every song in like a Word document and this will have like by far the highest word count. It just feels like very yeah. congested. Like get make this song five minutes. It's probably good. It's probably really good. But it feels yeah. like also because there are so many lyrics, there are no parts where it just allows itself to the instrumentation to shine for it to like built in a natural way because it feels like she always has to be saying something. <laughs> yeah. Well, would we like a break from dreamy folk pop, everyone? We. Oh, uh, let's go, lesbians. Let's go. <laughs> Sam, did you have something else to say about Croatia? No, I was just going to say we're good to move on. Well, we're here. It's Denmark. Ready the show. Let's go, lesbians. Let's go. No. I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> yes. So oh, from I that know. photo, you didn't know. I mean, I have the <laughs> worst radar in the world, so like fair. So I will speak on this. This is one of my favorites, like overall, I will say. Same. Um I think that my only like big issue with it is this slow start drags out just a little bit too long. It could have just ended after the maybe the first verse and then gone into more of the rock. Mm-hmm. And I think that would have done more of a service. Um I think they have really great stage presence. I think they have a really great cohesion as a band. Um, the song itself, it's not the most amazing thing, but I personally really like 
like it. Maybe because it feels really tailored to my taste. Um, yeah, I really enjoy the instrumentation of it. And let's go lesbians. I could see you doing a drag performance of this, Eris. Oh, absolutely. Please this please is my brand. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, I the the one thing I'm really concerned about is the live. Oh my vocal. fucking god! Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Mate. I was just gonna I'm say gonna... really quickly. I'm concerned about the live vocal because the live vocal in the national selection wasn't as strong as I would like it to be. But I'm hopeful that they have a couple months to like improve that and everything like that. But Lewis, I saw you jamming out over there. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, I just got to the part where like it was after the fast pace bit, and then it breaks down. What the fuck? Like I, I was. Oh my god. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> like no, just, it's like... honestly a great song. And from a very weak national final, I'm just glad they picked the right one to represent Denmark. Just saying hallelujah. <laughs> oh, but that was good too. That was I, really I good too. Like yeah. But I, I, pre- I would have preferred the show over hallelujah, yeah. honestly. Um, Something tells me Sindri doesn't like this. I'm, I'm shocked that you all love it. Uh, I think it starts <gasps> off really basic. It's not good. Uh, I feel like I'd heard it before like a million times. There was nothing original about how it started off. Um, it felt extremely familiar, but in a really bad way. Like it felt like this song has been created so many times, like in the beginning, then that rock transition comes in. I was like, what the fuck is this? And like, I was like, why is this happening? This is not what this song is. How can you like, it's like creating two separate songs and like blending them together. Um, It made it slightly better when it got going, when you like got over the startling uh, insanity of the, of the transition. Um, then kind of you kind of like get used to it and you're like okay now this is a different song okay i'm here um but it feels like a wedding band trying to cr- play rock music um it, it just did not feel like these were natural rock performers it felt like just like uh you know like the drums were cool i guess but the production really like did not allow them to shine i feel like the drums might be really fun live at least um the guitar solo was like that at least showed some like talent on, on a guitar or whatever but all of it felt like really i don't know it did not feel like I, I it felt like it was it was trying to go somewhere where it just did not arrive you know and oh, I don't our know. rankings like are going be really <laughs> different if i go to a lesbian wedding and they're performing I'm getting an Amaretto and Coke, and I'm having a good fucking time. Yeah, sure. Call the song off as rock if you want to create a rock song. What the fuck is the beginning if they're going to go where they go? <laughs> the, the transition wasn't natural at all. I, I understand, like, starting a song off slow and, like, ramping it up. This was, like, they cr- started creating one song and then decided, uh, like, someone just, like, slammed the guitar, uh, like, out of nowhere, and they're like, whoa, whoa, okay, we're doing something different now. Without that transition, it's just, oh my it's God. so off. It's, it's this is I, not like I, I love when songs do different things, whatever. This is, but don't don't do it out of nowhere. Where it, it isn't earned at all. Like there, <laughs> there was nothing that indicated that this song was gonna go where it went, and it didn't earn that. And like, sure, it was slightly better after it did that, but just start off that way because it was already horrible before that. You saw four women with shag haircuts, dressed like they came out of a seventies <laughs> band. In a tall bus full of coke, and you didn't think they were gonna do a rock song. I like I said, I listened to all these on Spotify. I did not watch the live performances. Uh, sure. So when I listen to yes, this, I, I hear a basic beginning. I had sure. I have no idea that this is like a like sure. a four women band mm-hmm. or whatever. You know what? I, I would have paid to watch like your this. like reaction to it. I would have paid <laughs> to I I yeah, the, the 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 transition at the start. I do love the transition to the key change though like towards the end that was yeah i I found that pretty cute i think at that point i was just like you know what's there to salvage like when you're doing it at the end of a song like what like it's i'm already out at that point you know like doing something amazing at the end like even if it's the best thing ever like you're if the rest of the song was just not good i'm already checked out so i can't believe you've done this it it actually really surprises me to see no because the Within like the Eurovision fandom, and with according to like a whole bunch of like <laughs> ESC YouTube channels, like and they're making the rankings. Like Denmark isn't that high on the list, and I don't know why. No one, <laughs> no one has this qualifying except for us minus Sindri. 
like yeah, honestly like, this is not my um, this is not my bottom at all there are worse songs sure. here and like i said after the rock transition starts like there's it's not it gets better um but it really feels like also just with the members of the band like they're it feels like some of them are too talented for the song and some of them have never played an instrument before or have never sung before. Like it really feels like the drummer and the guitarist know what they're doing and the rest of them are trying to keep up. Um, okay. I will say to be fair, the drummer has like been on the Eurovision stage before. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just, it does not feel together at all. It feel it, it feels like a jam session that uh, like, this will be like, if someone was just jamming out and they started off and then they just did that, whatever, like that's kind of fun or in a concert, somebody surprises you with that. But in a produced song, uh, a finished product, I feel like so many things could have been done more smoothly and so many things could have been more cohesive uh, about the performance of it. So maybe this is yeah. like, I can totally believe this is a million times better live and I will love it when I yeah. see it on, on semi-final night. I do not hate it in the sense that I feel like it has absolutely no potential because I feel like it has a lot of potential in a lot of areas. I just, as a song, as a structured song, there are so many things that are just off about what they chose to do. Um, but that's, yeah. Just my opinion. Uh, <laughs> and the worst and the worst part, Sindri, this was the best of the songs that Denmark presented. I can believe it. Denmark has Denmark is like hasn't really been doing that well. Uh, do really. not we do not accept any Uva Pahinandin slander in this <laughs> humble Christian. I feel like some story. people need a few more song lessons before they start singing live. That's my thing. That's completely fair, and I understand that for sure. Um, <laughs> so, like you can love drag queens, all, all the presence in the world, but you yeah. you gotta have some control over your voice to sing in live on your. Radio. Yeah, the the like I said earlier, the live vocal is where I'm concerned. If they can nail the live vocal on the night, I think this has a shot. I'm realistic in saying, you know, I'm not going to be surprised if Denmark doesn't qualify. Yeah, but well, I looking really at this like photo, that. like this is this this is my people, you know. This is the people I would hang out with on a yeah. Saturday night, you know, like chilling, having a drink, oh, you know. That like, like yeah. th th that's not that's not the problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's this. I, I did not know any of that before. I I just listened to the song, sure. and yeah. it was it did not give me what I wanted. Yep. Well, if this didn't give you what you wanted, perhaps Austria gave you what you wanted, Sindri. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Lumix and Pia Maria, the song is Halo. Y'all go right ahead. I'm gonna go right? first. They said, oh, okay. No, no, go, no, Pia no. Maria, oh. right? Not Pia Mia. Uh, yes, yes, Pia Maria, not Pia Mia. I was gonna say, yeah. Pia Maria, said, and, she, and she does exist. Fun fact, <laughs> she does exist. They said hello, and then I heard this live, and I said goodbye. You know what I mean? <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I this was one of my top songs, like top song. I really thought this was gonna be front runner. And then I don't know what the rest of you have heard, but they did a live performance of this and Pia Maria, her vocals were just really scratchy, she was just really out of tune. Um they said she might have had COVID. I just think the robot factory where they made her forgot to put her voice box in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I'm so disappointed because I loved this song when it first came out. I was like, oh, this is my fucking jam. This is a bop. Um, Lumix does a really good job on the instrumentations. It's really just an interesting song to listen to. I bang my head to this. And on the um, studio version, Pia has, a, I won't say really good vocals, but she has an enjoyable vocal on the studio version. Live, the live performances, from what I've seen so far for Pia, have been in train wreck territory. And I'm worried that this has gone from being a song that was going to be on the left side of the board to a song that could probably come in the bottom of its semi. Yeah, for context, um, ever since the first live performance that we saw from Israel Calling, which in itself was a complete disaster, um, this has dropped from 6th in the odds to 28th. Oh, wow. Like that. My difficulty is the studio version. I really like the song. This is a song that I would listen to the studio oh. version a lot. Her live vocal is not there. And I don't understand why they would pick an 18 year old with no live music performing experience 
and no career whatsoever to represent your entire country with a producer as well known as Lumix. Yeah. It's really frustrating for me. And this was also in my, it, prior to Israel calling, this was definitely in my top 10 for the semifinal. And spoiler, it's not anymore. And it, it's frustrating because I think the song is really, really well done from the studio version. Yeah, listening to just the studio version, I thought it was just a fun dance song, you know? It's something you will groove to, but it's it's nothing it's nothing special, I felt, though. I felt like, you know, it's not it's not giving me anything different, but it, it's def but it's it's just a fun song. It's like it's kind of hard to screw up a song like this if you have the basics of it. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's giving anything more. So uh, it's kind of middle of the pack for me. And I I literally wrote down like this will hinge on the live performance. And I said it's probably fun live. And now hearing that it's not it's like really it's worse live. I feel like. If this is not bringing more energy live than it does on the studio version, that like it's, it's uh, you know, yeah, it's, I will, it's, I will say that's what like, it needs, you know. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna be in the minority about like initial reactions and say I wasn't the biggest like fan of this song, um, because so I was like, okay, cool impression, um, and then I kind of listened to it more and I was like, oh, um, I kind of so I, I personally love the verses better than the chorus. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. For me, I, I kind of got annoyed, uh, almost almost annoyed of the chorus. That's <laughs> fair. Um, but it, it is like a fairly catchy song. And I think it's like, you know, perfectly solid. Um, it's not like my winner pick. Would like, you would you call it Sam? The no, I wouldn't, perfect, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. It's better than that. No. It's better than that. Um, There's another song for me that's perf the perfectly inoffensive award. I did award one this time. I did award one too. I'm um, pretty sure we have the same one, and we'll talk about it soon. We might. Um, so, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. kind of how it just. I, I don't know. I'm intrigued by the staging that they do. I think this was one of the songs where I was like, this needs to have really, really fucking cool staging if they're going to be at least interesting. Yeah, it needs to bring the energy, you know? It needs to bring a yeah. lot of energy and, like, get the crowd going. And I feel and like... vocals. Yeah, exactly. And vocals. Uh, I mean, that's a lost cause, as we've learned. Yeah. So... <laughs> the the, well, the Eurovision experience as as an artist is extremely tough. Like, you, it's yeah. it, it's a, you have to be able to hit the, hit every note every single time. There, there are a bunch of re rehearsals. Everything is being watched. There's no piece around. Like, you have to have like the nerve for that and you have to have the voice that has the stamina for it and i feel like a lot of people underestimate just how difficult it is even if you're not even singing that difficult of a song to be able to do that every single time along with a performance along with everything along with it because like it's not just like a live show where you're like on a, in a concert where of course you're like doing stuff but like this is literally like there are camera angles, everything. It's a perform. It's not just a live performance for the crowd. It's a live performance for the audience at home. All of this goes into an extremely hard performance, and putting someone in there that's so inexperienced that does not have the like vocal uh, teachings or or just the correct voice to to really be able to handle that. Um, it's it's really throwing somebody in the deep end that like doesn't even have arms arms and legs you know like it's 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 just not it's mm -hmm. it's it's tough but I think people really underestimate just how tough Eurovision is for for a performer to to really do well yeah I I really don't think this was the correct place for her to make her debut because mm -hmm. I don't unfortunately think it's going to be super beneficial for her career moving forward. Um, unless, you know what, I'm holding out hope that, you know, she has a month, a lot can be taught in a month. Yeah. Really so can. I'm hopeful, but I don't, uh, can we go back to our dreamy folk pop? <laughs> 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 because we're in Iceland. <laughs> 
We have sister, as they are now calling themselves, uh, different from the national selection, but go off. Um, sister. Sister. <laughs> Sisters are doing it for themselves. <laughs> This song, now, we talked about it in the Icelandic selection. This song has grown on me exponentially since then. Me too. Yeah, honestly, same. Yeah. Uh, I I think I had it, like, fourth uh, when we did the rankings or whatever. I, I think, think that I was had it somewhere highest. around there, too, yeah. I might have yeah, had it lower, like, like, slightly lower than that, but yeah. yeah. I think... It's surprisingly a lot better live than it is on the studio version. Like, yes. inc like uh, when I watched the first, like, sem I didn't even watch the final. I just watched the semifinal where this one was uh, um, performing. And, like, I was I was shocked that it was kind of my favorite of the night, even though there were songs there that I was looking forward to more. Um, they performed it really well. Uh, it's just, like, a really cozy, like, song. It feels like you're just, like, it's a good time. And... Uh, it's also just like really well written. Uh, like I said in in our preview, um, the songwriter of the song Lalo is already uh, like a, a very established songwriter, uh, really um, great artist, and and it kind of just shows in the song. It like just feels like advanced and professional in a way. Like it really just like feels like a real song that that uh, is like established and good. So like. I'm happy it got through in the end. Like I'm, I kind of wish uh, Reiki that there would have gone through when it was those two in the end. Turn, um, turn, turn this around, turn this around. Because turn, that would have just been like a lot more fun. It would have been a yeah. lot more fun. Um, but like I also said in our preview, that was just never gonna happen with um the voting public. Uh, that that and yeah. also the jury. Um, when it was those two songs, like there was only one winner gonna go come through from yeah. that. But uh, but I'm I'm happy with the selection. It's not my favorite from the semifinal, personally. Like it's not my top song, but it's it's higher up there than I would have probably expected. Um, so you know, we'll see I don't how it, I don't know if y'all watched their reaction to winning, but I, so I watched a compilation of like all of the national selection winners, like their reactions they i think had the most genuinely shocked reaction because i don't think they had any i don't think that they thought they had any shot at winning even in the final two and then when they're announced as the winner they're all kind of just like what yeah no, none of us thought <laughs> that they were going through like no. we were really talking about like we were talking about uh um, city and sana what katla. Uh, yeah, Sun city, katla. We were talking about, yeah katla like uh. those those were the songs that like when you heard the the studio versions beforehand you were like these are the gripping songs that are, like have the presence on stage but ultimately when you heard them on, on live it really showed who the real live performers were who were the people who really knew what they were doing and could really like even though they have like the slowest song of those people and like the 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 it just really felt like they knew what they were doing they brought the most presence to what the song was supposed to be of course this song is not supposed to bring like some super energy or like super charisma but it felt like exactly the correct energy for this song was brought into the live performance so in the end, somehow it got through, uh, surprisingly. But yeah, like I think I think it could do okay. But like you know, and and I I think as well with how uh, we know Pia Maria's voice to be now, I think they are in a in a, in one of the most advantageous positions in mm. this semifinal because they're going fourteenth, and they're going mm -hmm. after someone who probably still won't have the greatest live vocal come semifinals. So I think honestly they're. They're in the best position, I would say, overall. Like they they sound the same every single time. Like they have this yeah. song on lock. Like every single live performance is the same, but in a good way. Like, and it's harmonizing. Like it's not easy, but like oh, every single time they hit every single note exactly how it's supposed to be hit. Everything is done absolutely to perfection to what the song is. Is that enough though? Because like, is the song enough? Like they do this song absolutely perfectly but is is that enough i don't i don't think it is but i think it's good enough i think it's good enough i don't think it's the best i'm i'm in agreement with sinji here uh with that aspect i, I really like the I, I i like it i like it a lot i think we we've kind of established that um we've all that 
most of us have kind of liked it a lot better than um when we talked about Iceland um initially um song that Kevin uh but what I really love about this is kind of like their chemistry on stage together um there's always there's always something special about like families that like harmonize together mm-hmm. yeah like yeah. my sister has very flat Yorkshire accents if we tried to sing together, it would sound like someone steamrolling a duck. I won't lie. I would pay good <laughs> right. money for that. I'm like, be real you honest there. A family and you hear yeah. like mm-hmm. you know them like doing mm-hmm. doing their thing together. Like you can hear that that blend, and you can hear kind of like you know the how I guess like how how they are as a family, how you un- how close, how united they are, kind of thing. And um, mm-hmm. I I think they showed that really well. Um, also, shout out to whoever did the camera work at Song of Captain, because I loved the angles that they oh, gave yeah. them. I yeah. have quite... Well, actually, I don't have many thoughts about this song. Um, I don't dislike it. It's not one of my faves. It's perfectly inoffensive, as I would like to say. Yeah, it's, it's fine. What I will say is, this is the first song to come out of Iceland since 2019. For me, that hasn't been in my top 10. So I'm maybe a little bit disappointed. And I did prefer the runner-up from the national selection this year. But um, I still think this is a very cute, nice song. It's very, it's easy to listen to, is what I'll say. Mm. Sure. Lewis. <laughs> it, 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 uh, it doesn't live up to what we've been doing in the last few years. Uh, 100% it does not live up to that standard but it's it's still better than a lot of what we did before then um how, how do you yeah. live up to dotty frere though yeah it's like, like it's gonna, no one was really, going to uh, not, okay, not only that but also hot that it before that like yeah. we we had two like iconic like even three if we count both the fresh songs yeah. uh like three iconic songs in a row um but like you like you said, like this feels like decades of just like sisters harmonizing, and then they come here and just do it flawlessly. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's cute, it's fun, it's not it's not amazing, it's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I will say is, um, oh, whatever thought was just in my head just like literally flew out my mind. I, I, love that. I was gonna say something. Um, I, I um, uh, I mean, I I understand what people love about it i just think it's going to take time uh for it to grow on me but based on first listen i mean it's cute it's okay it's just gonna I, I, based on what you said logan and sam it's just gonna take time so yeah it, it took time definitely for i think all three of us to yeah, get to where we were from the selection to now but yeah this is uh for me of the dreamy folk pop this is one of my more preferred dreamy mm-hmm. folk pop songs in this semi-final so yeah um it will definitely bring it live it's not it's not yeah. as uh, it doesn't bring the the same energy on the on the on the production side i mm-hmm. hope they keep the exact same simple staging though i hope they don't i don't I think agree. they will but i hope they just do this pared down three guitars three microphones if they do that like triple shot that they did in Song of the Campaign. They have to do it. I feel they, like they have, have, to, to, they do have it. to do it. And like, if they do that, I think that's really going to stand out amongst the mix. It all depends on what other people do for their staging. But I, I'm really excited about this, which I'm, I'm happy because I wasn't excited about them <laughs> in our national selection. Yeah. I feel like they, if they start moving around and stuff, like, I just feel like that's going to bring the wrong energy to the song. And like, because kind of, as, like I mean, as we saw last year, Good songs can be ruined by like overdoing it on the staging. Leslie mm. Roy, we saw it. Ah! In that sweat. Oh my she god! She literally, yeah. where songs have literally been sabotaged oh. by staging before. And I mm-hmm. think keeping this clean and simple will be it's what it needs. I don't mm-hmm. think we need any dancers on stage. I don't think we need any giant trumpets or anything like that. But oh, let's just keep sake. it cute. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, the second you overcomplicate. <laughs> The second you overcomplicate the performance, that's that's going to distract from and oh to even distract the performers from what they're trying to do, and it could it could affect like the, what they're doing excellently beforehand. You know, if they if they suddenly have to remember whatever where they're supposed to stand or walk or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, speak, uh, Eris, okay, completely taken away from the semifinal. Eris bringing up the trumpets. I have a story. 
Uh, my friend was at the London Eurovision party, and um, 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 his name's not coming to me. Greg. No. Who's our entry this year? Oh, uh, Sam Ryder. Yeah, Sam just performed, and uh, and this guy, this guy comes up to my friend and goes. Isn't he amazing? And my friend goes, literally our best entry in the last ten, like last ten years or whatever he said. The person who asked him that question was James Newman. He just told James Newman that oh the songwriter was our best entry. Oh my god! <laughs> that's, 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 that's I also amazing. think James knows that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, James is like completely unabashed about it. And that's I, love, I, I love James Newman as a human. Just I, all the shit he went through last year with the zero points. I just, I want to give him a hug. Listen, oh, any Yorkshire <laughs> representation in Yorkshire, I will take it. Yeah, and I think I that's that. a Yorkshire King. I think that's a great transition to moving on to the next song. Yes, yes, let's do that. Which is also dreamy folk pop. Woo! I. <laughs> I with love this. Greece, Amanda I, Ten, Tenfjord died together, Lewis Go. <laughs> I fucking love this. I think for me, the lack of instrumentation completes it. Yep. The lack of yeah. instrumentation yep. completes it completely. Um, I love it. I love the like I don't know what the word is, but when like there's like a almost like a roboty undertone to like their voice. Like a, yeah, it's like kind of glitchy. Know. There's like a glitchy yeah. feeling to it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. a... I love that. I, th- I think like it just grabs you from the start. Like the intro is absolutely fantastic. It will sound the, acape- like, the acapella the- intro. I'm sorry. Like it's it's so beautiful. And the thing is, like it, this will sound amazing live, even though there's not a lot of instrumentation to it. That's what like like Lewis just said. That's what I have written down. Like I love the minimalistic nature to this song. Like it's it, it, everything is has a purpose. Every sound has a purpose in this song, and like I like I said earlier, uh, with w- what song was that again? Um, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was the Netherlands one as well. Like it feels so yeah. spacious, even though it's not loud. Like it it like it has those like echoes that will really like like echo throughout the whole arena when it's performed. I feel like this will really gr- grab the the crowd. Um, and it's just like, it's not often that we have songs in Eurovision that use the empty space of what a full, like a huge arena is not in the sense of let's be as loud as possible, but let's try to create as much atmosphere as possible in a minimalistic way. And I feel like that's, what's really original about this. Um, and just sounds amazing. You know, this is one of my absolute favorites. This is also like one of my absolute favorites. Um, yeah. Uh, from, I think I would say for for the whole year, like this is absolutely a standout to me. Like, I think I, I'm basically cop- going to copy and paste everything that <laughs> Lewis and Sindri said, especially about the the intro, the acapella intro with the with the kind of glitchy sound. Like, I am a huge sucker for that in songs when it's done well. And I think also she has she has the voice to fill up a stadium kind of thing. Um, if like even even if the staging even if the staging staging is just like nothing on stage and it's just her with a microphone and maybe like a spotlight on her. and the waterfall don't forget the wa- about the oh waterfall. Gosh, waterfall oh my god okay yeah well we can add the waterfall in there too <laughs> we feel like that would make oh yeah no i i really love this and i think the only thing my only thing about it is the way she sings the word die Die. No, not that, not that time. But oh. when she says, when she says, like, die together, die together, kind of thing. I don't know. As someone who, who I, I was a choir kid, we were told not to do like that. Oh stuff. yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> As someone who's also been a choir kid, I feel like sometimes <laughs> we have to learn how to break away from uh, the some of the things that they teach us there. I feel like a lot have of have we choir all kids been choir have... kids? <laughs> Lewis, I feel like a lot of people get I very. I was never a choir kid. kid. I'm. <laughs> do I? I love when people do something. Now we're all choir different. kids. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also think like the glitchy nature of the song as well like uh, i what i love about when when glitchiness is like introduced in, in emotional songs it really feels like someone is trying to break through 
uh, the production of a song to try to like uh, try to show someone their emotion. Like it feels like there's another barrier of them trying to communicate to you how they feel, um, which just it brings another like layer to it, uh, which I really loved in this sense. Like if the vocals were super clear the entire time, I feel like it wouldn't it wouldn't bring the same uh, emotion uh, to the to the performance. But because there is some glitch in it, it feels like it's kind of like there's a struggle to get the song through to you. Um, it makes it even more uh, emotional and the success in what it's trying to be. Uh, I just, th I just think there are so many like small little details to this song that, that are so considerate. And so um, just like, it, it's just such a thoughtful song. It really feels like someone put a lot of work into this. Someone yeah. really like this was some, like someone really passionately wanted to make a good song and, and, and it sounds amazing. I think she was the one that wrote this too, right? I was. I'm double checking. I'm oh wow! Pretty sure. Please double check because I is, she 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 has a she has a co-writer, but she is the writer on this song. Yep. I'm gonna say something really shocking, but once again, dreamy pop is not for me. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It's been so long that I've listened to this song. I don't remember much about it. I okay. still hold it compared to the other songs. I still hold it in pretty high regard, but once again, I just acknowledge it's not my taste. And then um, I can't wait to see Cypress give this 12 points. <laughs> uh, no, honest to God, Cypress and Grace giving each other 12 points. I don't think we're going to get any booze this year because we'll talk about <laughs> Cypress, but they both actually came with like pretty damn good songs. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. They're decent songs. This I'm still anticipating booze on the basis that oh, it's it's like oh, they're always going to do this. Oh, oh yeah, fuck no, off, Lewis. Yeah. No, 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 like, no, no, I mean like in the in the crowd, they probably will boo it. Just oh, they will boo it. Cyprus it, and but... Greece, but it's like yeah. This my favorite a... thing, mm -hmm. my favorite thing is they shout out Greece before they actually announce Greece. <laughs> Twelve <laughs> points. The audience is like, yeah, yeah it's Greece. Greece, I'm sure, like, yeah. Um, yeah. this is a winner waiting to happen. Like, I genuinely would not be surprised if Amanda won. Um, hey, I would, I would love a Eurovision next year in Athens or whatever. Like, that would be beautiful. another Please. Eurovision in Athens. Yeah, no, no. Amazing. Let's do it in, um, let's do it in Thessaloniki. That'd be fine. That'd be fun mm, and different. Yeah. This, like, this is better than the winning song from Greece that 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 year, the year that mm. you know that time. So, that's my number one. Even than that. You're my number one. one. What I will say, um, <laughs> if I had to choose between Greece and Cyprus, I would want to give it to Cyprus. Maybe just because uh, I prefer Cyprus, but also because I just want to see Cyprus win yours. And they've been trying so hard. God bless them. I don't uh, think... just just mm, just just for Elaine Ferreira. Ah, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. There. <laughs> Not oh, Sam, God, we... ruining their. <laughs> Oh my god! Not I'm both like, Sams almost ruining their setup. No, because she it's it's the way that Elena for ate up that stage. But anyways, no, we move, we move. But yeah, this uh, this is phenomenal. And Absolutely. Yeah, period. Oh, we've made it <laughs> to the part of the program where we must discuss. Give that wolf a banana. I have a lot of things to say, and none of them are pleasant. <laughs> Yay! Let's just start with you then. Yep. Fuck I... this song. This <laughs> cheap, low budget, Daft Punk wannabe, bad built, bad written, poorly constructed assault on my fucking earlobes. Okay, maybe this is all a bit dramatic, but it just gives me like a cheap B tech Daft Punk. The lyrics is. The, what I have to say about this song is it's trying to be quirky so bad it wants to be like, ooh, look at us, we're different. We're looking at you because not because you're different, but because you're bad, bitch. It's not a good song. I can't fucking. I'm sorry. I'm angry. I'm angry that Norway sent this, and I didn't even watch the Norwegian selection competition if they even have one. It's just Ooh. there were. Oh my god. Okay, I have to jump in. I'm so sorry. There were so many other phenom. We lost. I'm gonna definitively say the best song of the year. We lost out of the Norwegian selection in Elsie Bay. Like we yeah. lost 
a the pair of yellow song. twats and ugly trainers. You know what I mean? Just this yes. song. We lost Elsie Bay. We lost Farida. I... We lost like so. Um. Oh God, Sophie. Oh, what was her last, last name? Last name starts with a B. But um, something. Sophie. Something. Made of glass. Made like, of glass. Yeah. Maria Mon Fly. I... Like we lost so many fucking good songs out of this selection. We lost with me tonight too. I... Like even that with was good. And, like as much as I shit on this song, I will. I understand why people like it because it is yes. catchy. It is like an air worm. Yes. But for me, it's constructed in the way where it's trying to be that way. It knows that if it can get under your skin, it will do better. And for yes. me, it's just, we've had better dance songs at Eurovision. And the whole act of Subwoofer, and I won't shit on them for their talent or anything because I'm sure they're talented people. But it's just something we've seen done better before. And it's just, I don't like quirkiness for the sake of quirkiness. I like quirky when it stands up for good reasons, like in 2007 with Vertica Sedushka. That is an example of a quirky performance done well. Uh, I could probably give other examples, but not off the top of my head right now. I'm just, I don't like this. Yeah, you want a certain authenticity to quirkiness. Like... Otherwise, it just feels very cringe, you know? Like, quirkiness can be extremely fun if that's just who someone is. This does not feel like this is who they are. This feels like they're trying to, like, corner a market, um, which is so annoying. Um, also, I don't like when people talk about bananas. Uh, I feel like that should... We should just, like, we all know they exist. Let's not, like... It's, it's, let's just not... Why are we talking about them so I much? agree, Cindy, um, I don't like seeing the word banana in a song title. I don't know why it annoys me, but I just I just feel like it shouldn't be there. <laughs> no, not the like, Not the no. It's, it's <laughs> such a silly word in, at first, but it's also just an annoying word. And like I said, like... We all know bananas exist. Like, let's stop talking about them. Um, Banana. That, it's just like I, I, I prefer it to eat your salad as like the silly song of this semifinal. I'm um, on the same page. I prefer it, but still, it's just like it's, it's nothing new. It's it's not my cup of tea, but it's it's not awful. Uh, it's just like it's, I don't know. It's kind of annoying. Kind of cringe. Um, probably kind of, I don't know, probably fun live. I haven't seen the live performance, but I'm like, it might be fun <laughs> live, but I'll forget about it right away. It's pretty fun live. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. I enjoy the performance. Like live. even watching this poster, I'm like, these, they're trying to be something that they're not like, well, it's and- so, it's so try hard. It's so un- unauthentic. Like it that's just, what I'm getting at. It yeah. feels like it's trying really hard and it feels like it's intentionally going after the sort of EDM or dance audience yeah. and it's not even really achieving that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and the running um, rumor is that these are the same guys that produced What Does the Fox Say? Because they're also path. Norwegian. Which exactly. is another shit song. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, it's that was along trying to be something, line. unfortunately, it became something. I just not think something. Norway should apologize for sending this. This is, yeah, this is the turn of the year. Even the other song that was in their super final, like it was boring and generic, but it was better than this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was someone you love. Now I'm someone you hate. Like, it's yeah. better than that, but... Lewis. We as a society have moved past the need for bananas. Um, well, I love this. Uh, I really do. I think... I'm uh, not your, I think Eurovision needs something like this. Um, and I fucking love... I think the promotion team... Uh, behind them is absolutely amazing the yeah. fact that i mean i only saw one national final but i love how they were just sitting there in the front row of australia decides just casually like play, just <laughs> placed in the middle of the audience for no reason yeah. i love that uh, um um i think this is the one song that i've i haven't even i hadn't even listened to it until just now but that was the one like just the brand itself of the warfare i've known about it since like this whole your vision 2022 journey began so um yeah journey. I'm, I'm, I'm journey so yes i i i'm a fan of the song i think your vision needs a song like this i don't think it's gonna do amazing i i definitely oh. think it's gonna i think it's i think it's got a gr- solid chance of qualifying um as but, as much as i hate saying this i can almost guarantee this is going to be left side of the board in the final yeah because it's goofy because the televote is going to eat this up. I already know it. 
I oh, already, I, I already see you, the UK giving this 12 points, probably. Absolutely. I feel like this Period. could also be a song that quickly falls down. Uh, because there's, I'm hoping. I feel, like, I feel like it's usually the songs that have like nothing to come back to, you know? Like, it might be one at first, but then you're not getting anything new from hearing them again, you know? And so then slowly, yeah. like, you get used to them, you get bored of them, and mm. people won't vote for them in the final. Um, I, I hope that's what this will be. But people that only watch the final, we'll I feel like, it. are going to love this. Mm, and we'll so see. that's my fear is, like, I, I don't see this winning, but I see this doing oh, no, very well. Not. If this yeah. wins, I'm going to be thoroughly disappointed. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it'll I, ever win. I really I like impossible. that it's being. I really like that it's being seen though. <laughs> yeah. To I win, mean, you really bad. have to have. Like it's you catchy, really, it's engaging. I love the choreo. Yeah. Like to win, you really have to have some kind of balance between the televote and the jury, and I don't see the jury loving that. Uh, the only at props. All. The only props I can really give this is that they have good stage presence and they're entertaining to watch. The song itself. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to um Keith. Shout out to Jim. Um, shout out to DJ Astronaut because oh they God. are credited as the writers of the song. <laughs> sure. Whoever they may be. Yeah, right. Well, well they have to credit them because if they credit the actual writers, they'd be too fucking embarrassed to be associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. Am I, I just put mean? DJ I really not on there. I don't want anybody no. to know my name. No, not too mean at all. But no, it, it it this didn't even win the um the national final by that much. It only won by fifty thousand votes. It was a, it was Ooh. one of the closer. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, then it, this this gives them a shot to qualify because if North Kid had won, they weren't qualifying out of this semi. So. No. Yeah, so this gives them a shot. But we've got one more to talk about in the semifinal, and then we've got two other ones. Uh, two hours in. Yay. Woo. Lovely. Yes. You're all wonderful humans for putting up with this. Wait. Um, what? Is it time? It is time. Congratulations yes. to Rosalyn from Armenia for winning. The perfectly inoffensive award, and that is yeah, that is that. two of them because you get one from me too. Um. <laughs> I okay, so this might shock everyone, but I do actually really like this song. I really like this. Okay, I think it's sweet. I think it's cute. I think it captures a period in my life specifically. I think it captures like my mid-teens, and that's why I like it okay. so much because this sort of genre of indie hipster bullshit was like really popular when i was like 15 years old so it touches that part of me and sure yeah it's a really cute song i really like the writing is it the most groundbreaking thing absolutely not can would it qualify maybe but i think rosalyn herself has a nice vocal and she seems like a good it seems i enjoy this it's a nice song and i like it and i hope it does well will it do well who knows but it's really enjoyable it's I would sweet. love to see a flying house on the Eurovision stage. Please, I need a flying house. <laughs> oh, if we don't put Sam Ryder out there on something that's like flying onto the stage, then that's a waste of a good space. Just man. reuse, just reuse Blas Canto's moon from last year. You're good. <laughs> um, we'll repaint the trumpet. It'll look great. No, but yeah, even 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 though I called it perfectly offensive, I I still like pretty much like this song as it's, well it's a good song yeah it, it's a good song it gave me very much like luminaires like luminaires strombolas along that area um obviously i would say that because i saw because I, I i've seen i've seen them perform live and they're they're great um but yeah no i i can easily see rosalind like doing well like in live performance in in her in her live performance of her song um I love I love the lyrics. I love the vibe. I think she has a nice voice, um, but it's 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 not like like Era said like anything like groundbreak groundbreaking. But I still I still really like it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a very basic folk song. Uh, it's 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 not bad, uh, but it's nothing new. It's nothing original. Um, but I don't hate it. You know, yeah. like. I do love I do love folk folk uh, as a genre, but I also feel like 
I I like a lot of genres, but I like good songs from that genre. I don't just like every single song from that genre. And this very much feels like something Spotify would show me because they think I like folk, but yeah, this is just a folk song. It's not a good folk like it's not a great folk song, you know? Yeah. It's like it's just an average thing, you know, average average song that, you know, a lot of people could make this song you know there doesn't take a special person to create a song like this it um so it's it's but it's it's not anywhere near my bottom it's it, there's nothing like you said there's nothing offensive about this um everything is done like pretty well the singing is pretty good but it's it's just basic and nothing you know you know it's not competitive for eurovision yeah. That's where yeah. I'm like, I think this is, although I also said it was perfectly inoffensive. I like this song. I am right there with you, Sindri. This is something Spotify would recommend for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like this is very like in the genre that I listen to. Like honestly, Armenia, Iceland. Um, like if you look at my, like outside of Eurovision, my, uh, my genres that I listen to would be like Armenia, Iceland, Estonia, uh north macedonia are probably like the four that i would regularly listen to on a, on like outside of this um it's just not competitive it was very surprising for to armenia, see from yeah. armenia specifically um it kind of seems like oh we're hosting junior this year let's not necessarily <laughs> send something that's gonna win eurovision either yeah. like I don't know. It's a good song. I do. Yeah. Sorry, I was just saying. I um, Rosalind did speak about this on TikTok, mm -hmm. where she said that she sent this song in around 2017, 2019. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And she's been struggling to make it as an artist in Armenia for the past however many years. Mm -hmm. So for her song to get to sent to Eurovision is like really life changing for her. So I'm really happy yes. for Rosalind. Absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely talent there. Like this is this is a th there's definitely talent in this artist. May like, you know, yeah. I feel like there's def definitely somewhere for her to go. Um, but like I said, when if you really want to make it or win Eurovision, you have to you have to bring something new and something that feels yeah. fresh. And this feels like it fits in somewhere, but it's nothing that's like a lot of you yeah. said before. It's nothing groundbreaking. I I could possibly see this qualifying and doing around the same, having the same amount of success or probably less success than what Navi Band had for Belarus. Mm. It's mm. actually no, I don't think it will do. It'll do that well. I could see this qualifying, but I would see it on the lower end of the right side of the board. Yeah. If this qualifies, it's going to be tenth in the semifinal. Like, and I don't see it oh, any agreed. higher than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like right on the cusp. Yeah. Yeah, Lewis. I don't know if you've been talking this whole time, honey, but you're muted. No, no I, I, I've been, I've been trying to get into this. I, I've, I've been playing this over and over, trying to get into it every time, but it's not working. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> fair. Yeah. Completely fair. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it doesn't have a moment that grips you anywhere. No. Like no. It, it's like a general vibe that you can maybe like get into, but there's nothing that really grips you or makes you like want to go back to it. I'm not going to turn this song on specifically, but I'm not going to turn it off if it comes on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's, kind of yeah. It it's so interesting. They chose her to close the show. I 100% thought Subwoofer was closing. Yeah. I would have swapped them. Uh, I absolutely would have swapped them, but what we're not the EBU. So we should be, but we're not. Um, <laughs> this at least is a bit of a of a like uh, like we're slowing down a bit in the end, you know. We're not we're yeah. not it's giving us. We're not, we're, not, we're starting we're starting high energy and we're ending with a uh, floating this. house. One, yeah. two, dun, dun, dun. like it's a good song. It's just not competitive for this, and I I don't necessarily know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I love possible. that she's getting the spotlight. She's Absolutely, yes. She seems like mm -hmm. a lovely, lovely person, and I'm very happy for her. Follow her like, TikTok. She makes really great TikToks. Noted. No. Um, so that is all 17 songs in the semifinal. We do, we're going to go long, but we do also have to talk about uh, the two big five countries that are voting in this semifinal. I'm very excited to talk about both of them. And first up is France. Yeah. This is Alvan and Ahe 
with Fulen. Uh, notable because this is the first year of Eurovision ever where uh, not a single lyric of French is being sung because this is not in French. I really like this. I, I think this. it's maybe because this sort of like electro electro folk trend we're seeing in Eurovision over the past couple of years is really I really enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. I love that it's in Breton. Uh, I hope it, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. Be. Breton or Breton, I think. Breton. 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 Yeah. Breton. Yeah. Breton. 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 But it's um, I think it's a really entrancing song. I can find myself losing myself in the song. It's very interesting. What I will say is some of the live performances haven't been completely smooth, but I think they will get there in the end of the month. Um, yeah, it's just really enjoyable. I love the instrumentation. I l love how the way the lyrics sound. I mean, I don't speak a word of Breton, but I mean, clearly I can barely fucking manage English, but it's still a really enjoyable song and it does take me back to like Shum and Solove. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this does. Yeah, like... This just sounds amazing. Like I, I, it started off great, and then it just continued to be amazing. Like literally in the middle of my notes, I just say like, just wow, I love this. Like it just continues to be great. This would have been my number one if we were if this was part of the ranking. Um, wow. Honestly, like I, I agree with Ayers as well with the fact that like I, I love electro folk, like the blend of kind of like indie vibes along with some electronic instrumentation along with it when people experiment with that and this song does it really really well um the language sounds absolutely beautiful the singing like everything flows so well it's just like a really well constructed song and obviously an excellent producer on it um because it, everything about it just sounds really good at least in the production side of, side of things so, you know, this is just, it really surprised me. I didn't even listen to it beforehand. I didn't know what we were going to do. So I just like listened to it quickly on my like bad phone speakers and still it sounded amazing. So, yeah, you know, I think, I think it's a really, really, your... really good song. And French, France have really been bringing it recently. Oh, yeah. Alvin, if you are out there. He's straight. You. Stop. Oh, damn. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, so... unfortunately, the internet confirmed this man is straight, and we're all very straight. Okay, well, well... <laughs> so is the guy. In. So is the no, guy but in. So I, I love he he's doing so much on the on this track. <laughs> like I I know he he's like one of the songwriters for this too, right? I um, believe so. I'm gonna double check that really. Yes, quick. I I know he's like a a credit. I don't know if he's the credit, but he is a credit of the songwriting of the music because um, he i know he's doing the most on stage and then you have <laughs> the three women um but i i love the staging i love i love the the woman that's dancing around and kind of <laughs> doing the whole voguing element kind of thing and i really enjoy that um usually in a song when, whenever there's unison i'll i'll feel a type of way about it but like given what they're what Fulen is going for like I it works the unison works really well um yeah yeah no I I really really enjoy this song the the chorus which I love I love the chorus translates to fearless in the middle of the clearing dances the spark raging souls spinning and spinning around her raging souls spinning and spinning around her la 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 um I'm Look. It, it, honestly, that um, feels like the vibe of the song, really. Like, it honestly, works. yeah, it, like it would get the forest spirits completely lit, you know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. I think this is going to be either very benefited or very hurt by where it ends up in the running order. Yeah. Um, we don't know where the only country we know exactly what position they're in is Italy, and we'll talk about that shortly. Um, but I I like this song a lot. This song has grown on me. This was not one of my absolute favorites coming out of the French selection. Um, I had a couple others that uh, Sam and I both uh, loved. Um, Helen and Pauli, icon, legend, love. Um, yes. Yes. If, um, I could, if, if I could add anything to this conversation, it's that I want to see more of the Celtic languages represented at Eurovision because I think they're such a beautiful language group that we don't get to see a lot of. Absolutely. Mostly because the United Kingdom has, I don't think we've ever sent a song that's not been in English. I know that Ireland sent songs in Irish before, 
but I would love mm, for us to yeah. send songs in Welsh and then send songs in Gaelic and then maybe Manx or maybe Cornish, but um, I don't think we're going to achieve that once we're still in the United Kingdom. But it is something that I feel like a personal connection to and really important to me to see that we see these languages that the UK has that don't get any representation really to see them on the stage at the ocean. It's a really beautiful thing. So I'm very happy to see Breton on the stage at the ocean. Just doing a cursory look at song titles over the years for the UK, and there are a lot of them. I'm going to take a wild guess and say there haven't been any that haven't been in English. So, <laughs> yeah. no, probably not. Um, I, I, I totally, I totally agree. I feel like in general, I what I, I feel like I've started appreciating more and more about Eurovision is is like hearing all the different languages sung, because um, such a big part of music isn't just like lyrics are such a small part of music. Like, like mm -hmm. of course they matter, but music is so much about conveying emotion through sound and not through words um and even a lot of artists have you know made it a point to like the lyrics don't even like make that much sense it's just like kind of poetic words that are thrown out there and then it's just the emotion is put through by the performance of the singer and and the and the instrumentation and I, that's what i love about eurovision so often is like someone can get me super hyped by saying something i have no idea what they're saying or they can get me super sad and i have no idea what they're talking about um it's all about like how they how they mm -hmm. convey that emotion and i think that's what's beautiful about eurovision is we're like mm -hmm. exposed to so many different uh languages and cultures that still are able to bring us into that space and make us feel whatever they want us to feel. Lewis, um, I'm I, I, I'm intrigued by the staging. I think I need to see the staging. Love the production value. Love the love the vocals. It's nothing. Um. I don't know. It, it, it's nothing that really wins me over as like I don't, I don't know. It's not nothing that I haven't heard before. I feel like I, this is a song I've heard on your vision before. Um, I can agree to that just because this has been a real trend in the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Well, we almost had two of them because um, if the Spanish national public had had their way, uh, Don't You Get Us would uh, would be representing Spain, but they're not um nothing against that song but i just love my girl chanel too much oh we'll talk about <laughs> i'm very excited to talk, to talk about chanel in the next episode but um all right one more and then we can do rankings and we can finally be done boy this is a long video yay this is gonna be a lot this is gonna take like two hours to upload to youtube and i can't wait for it um <laughs> last up we got to talk about the host country italy Huh, Mahmoud and Blanco with Brividi. I once, love this just as much as I did when we talked about it for San Remo. Once yep. again, not my taste. I hate it only because it's such a good fucking song and I would hate to see Italy win again. Like, I'm too paid to let Italy win twice in a row. But it's a beautiful song. It tells a beautiful story. It's a beautiful music video. It's not gay. My taste. It's, it's literally very gay. gay. And I love it. Yeah, I can't really add much to the conversation for this one. I, this song, just not my alley. Yeah, I, I hate that I love it on the basis that it's the same country that's hosting. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. That's, that's the, the only thing. But I, I love the song, I really do. Um, if it's representing a different country, great. <laughs> because then we get to see more countries. And I've only Bulgaria sent this. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's it's okay. I don't know. It's not my cup of tea. Sure. I I feel like yeah. especially through the production, I feel like it's a. I don't know. Uh, this is a singing competition. There's a lot of work on those vocals, and I. I don't know. I, I don't love that, that for a singing competition. Uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm not someone that's against auto tune at all. I love when people modify their voices through. That's just another part of making music. Um, it, but for this, I just feel like it didn't bring a lot to the song itself. I feel like I've heard a so a songs like this a lot. There's nothing new in this. Um, the instrumentation is pretty good, uh, but the singing, the all, everything that's done with the vocals is just very average to me, and I. I don't know if it's it's for Eurovision to me. 
I will say the live vocal is substantially better than the studio version. Yeah. I actually, so, yeah. I actually don't love the studio version. I'll be honest. Um, for that exact same reason, Sindri, there's just a little bit too much auto tune in it. The live vocal though, they both absolutely knock it out of the park. All right. Yeah. I'll um, probably, then I'll probably love it live. You know, we saw it over five days of San Remo. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I also love how this is like another one of those like instances where it's kind of like we talked about Slovenia before and how like, you know, the singer is kind of like an experience because because he's so young. Blanco is actually like only like 18, I swear. <laughs> like no, he's older than that. I thought. Is he? Is he? I I I saw somewhere that he was like. Mm -hmm. half of I don't think this is gonna get me any. Oh wow. Okay. Well. Um. Fuck my drag. Right. Yeah. No, he's eighteen. Eight, 19. Nineteen. Oh yeah. Nine. Like Ten for about February, Okay. Then my point still stands. Well, but we'll still, see how. No, nonetheless, like I love this song so much. I will agree yeah. that they put wait, they put a bit too much auto tune in the studio version, and the live version does it absolute justice. Yeah. Um. There, there's a specific moment, like in the in the live version specifically, and it's the way it's the way Mahmood ends the first chorus <laughs> with the three BBDs and. It's it's av after he sings the third like BVD in that phrase, you hear like absolute silence and like the entire world stops. And then yeah. you're into the second verse and you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just honestly, I'm like, what Italian city are we going to next year? Because I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. And I wouldn't be mad about it. I understand everything y'all were saying about like hating this because it's from the host country. And I get that, and I respect the hell out of that. I just can't deny that this is Wasn't absolutely it, one of my favorites. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure Ireland in the 90s had like a stint of winning back to back. 90, yeah. yeah, I think 90, it was like three years 93, around, right? 93, 94, and 96, I believe. Mm, yeah, so almost. Um, yeah, almost in a row. And then that was the last time they won. <laughs> <laughs> and they're I, not going to win this year, as much as I love Brooke. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's but, like rich. also, like I prefaced. All my opinions in the beginning is I've only heard the the studio versions of these songs. The the ranking that I created could change a lot on the night depending on the performances because that's that's like fifty percent of your vision, you know. Like yeah. studio yeah. versions, like show you only a part of it. I've I've heard songs that are amazing studio wise and are horrible live, and some yeah. songs that are really underwhelming uh, in studio but are amazing live. So. Um, mm -hmm. It really hinges on those live performances. The latter is honestly how I feel about Toy. In all honesty, like the performance of Toy for me is so much better. I think studio. it's bad in both studio and live. <laughs> well, that's a valid opinion that I understand and can respect. But <laughs> yeah, also just the optics are not great. But we'll we'll continue. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with that happened, we did that. Um, Lewis, have you listened to all of the songs from this? I have. Final? Okay, I great. Have so, congratulations. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> pick a color really quickly that's not red, blue, purple, or green. Indigo. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where that. <laughs> I can make that happen. Sure. I don't know what color indigo is. <laughs> it's like Me a neither. deep blue. It's like between oh. blue and and purple. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. No, oh, I'll go yeah. back. I'm sorry. I just, that, didn't, I, that was just the first thing that came. No, I love it. I'm on board with it. I'm I'm very here for it. So we are going to go into a very quick round of ranking because this video is already very long. Uh, if you've stuck out this long, A, thank you. B, Y, and C, thank you. Um, <laughs> I know. I could have lost a mini. I could have lost oh, a mini. Please send this video out <laughs> to, your, to your loved ones and anyone. Yes. Okay, let's get this screen. Let's get this screen a share in. If anyone knows what I was trying to reference there, but not doing it, I appreciate you. But no one's gonna know it. Was so. that pheromone? It was pheromone. <laughs> let's get this roast to cook in. <laughs> let's get this roast to cook in. Um, I don't know which. That kind of looks better from the bottom. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. So. We're going to do rapid fire rankings from 17th to first. 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna type as quickly as I can. Are we ready? <laughs> yes. Hold and on. just There's give the I country. All I'm putting is the country. So. Oh shit! Yeah. I wrote down the song titles, so y'all are gonna have to help me with country. I'll. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, fine. Fine. that's fine. That's completely fine. All right, Sindri, number seventeen. Yeah, only song that made me genuinely mad is Bulgaria. That's my seventeen. Fair. Copy paste. Um, mine, to nobody's surprise, is Slovenia. <laughs> no way. Really? Wow, okay. Wow. Lewis. Um, okay. Whichever country sent the song Eat Your Salad? Okay. Sindri, 16. Uh, worst production I've heard in a while, Moldova. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Copy, Damn. paste. Wow! Wow, Sam and I, you know. Um, I have Switzerland. Fair. Bulgaria. Um, okay. The train song. Moldova. Well, fifteen. Um, that's Eat Your Salad for me. Is Latvia. Get out okay. of here. Switzerland. I have Bulgaria. At work, uh, Switzerland. <laughs> I wrote down snap. Armenia. Oh, Armenia. Oh, okay. no, go fuck yourself. Honestly, it's are you I, fucking joking? I, it's oh, boring. Okay, <laughs> this one is a strong embodiment of bamboo okay. because it's extremely hollow. It's Switzerland. Sure, <laughs> no, I love so it. Rude. Sam, uh, Slovenia. Uh, I have Moldova. <laughs> You're all gonna fucking hate me. Netherlands. <gasps> oh wow. Okay. Is is wow. Netherlands is Netherlands did dip to, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. mispronouncing this, but yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. That's, That's yours as well? Yeah. Oh my god, wow. twins. Wow. Okay. Thirteenth. Yeah, my next oh. one is the kids who are trying to imitate the art of disco. Uh Slovenia. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Croatia. Leave those children alone. Oh wow! I'm kind of surprised by that, Sam. Yeah. Uh, I have. Oh no! I have Austria. <laughs> uh, you're gonna hate me again, Portugal. Oh, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I understand, but I hate you. I got it, but I hate you. <laughs> I wrote Lewis. down guilty pleasure. Croatia. Yeah. You Thank leave you. the country of Croatia <laughs> alone. Sure. 12. Um, yeah, I still think we should stop using the word banana so much, so let's put no <laughs> in there. Okay. Austria. I think finally, for the first time, I agree with someone. I also have Norway. <laughs> oh, thank you. Some of you are putting Norway dangerously high. Oh, where am I? Oh, 12. Iceland. Wow. I, and I'm not surprised by that, actually. Um, I put uh, Sentimente. What? Wow. wow. Oh. Wow, that's low. All right. Um, okay. Oh, on the bubble of qualifying in 11th for everybody, where are we at? Next is the Taylor Swift impersonator, Croatia. Okay. Next would be Give the Wolf a Banana with Norway. Wait, okay. I feel. Did I skip one? I skipped one in my rankings. Same. Uh, <laughs> so. I skipped number 14. Uh, 14 was Denmark for me. 14 was Denmark. Oh, so wow. move everything, yeah, so everything up one. Move it up. Yeah, I put, See, that's, you're that's placing just, Norway uh, dangerously high. Fig yeah, I feel like, yeah, Denmark, just figure out what you're going to do with the song before you start recording. Okay. So we already oh. have Sindri's tense, so that's positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll get to yours tense. in a second, Louis. Uh, mine is Armenia. Um... Mine's Lithuania. I hate you. But I understand, wow. knowing your taste. Okay, Lewis, what did you fuck up? Uh, I fixed it. I'm, I don't need okay. to change anything. Okay. Um, next, I'd have Iceland. Okay. Sindri's in 10th with Croatia. Sam? Uh, my 10th is Armenia. My 10th is Ukraine. Wow, okay. Yeah. Oh, tenth. Um, oh, this is so the one point. I might might be changing my mind on this now, but uh, Moldova. 
I'm wow. thinking that I probably would have placed it lower, but okay. Uh, the show. Y'all are sleeping on Denmark. Don't worry, I have it high. It's giving yeah. lesbophobia. I'm seeing a lot of lesbophobia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sindri. Yeah, next I have this really weird cover of Beyonce. It's Halo by Austria. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you've never listened to Beyonce without telling me you've never listened to Beyonce. <laughs> Sam? Um, Latvia. Oh my god, me too! Period. <laughs> Uh, 12 points to Grace, as the Cypriots like to say. Oh my gosh. The best? Okay. This is where the wolves belong. No. No. Yes. Where the wolves belong is prison. No. <laughs> that's, the highest, that's the highest we rated Norway. Wow. Okay. Sindri, right. eighth. This, this next song is called Snapping, even though she did not with the song. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is why I'm happy to have you on, Sindri. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Um, where are we eighth? Um, Iceland. I have Croatia. Oh wow. Yep. And because I believe children are the future, I put Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis. Uh, the song titled Disco. God damn it. Oh, same. Fuck you both. Um, Seven. Song, yeah, Ukraine can blame the rapper for it. Uh, their song being this low, but yeah, unfortunately, okay. Ukraine is down at seven. Okay. Uh, Sam. Denmark. Okay. I have the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, I put uh, Armenia, Rosalind, in this in this spot. Okay. And it is a spot. Uh, song title: <laughs> Intention. What? I'm no. so fucking gagged. Okay, no no one can ever complain about my taste. Ever nope, never again. again. Never again. Eris, honestly you're safe. insane. I didn't even notice that you hadn't said we'll get No, it. I didn't um, notice it either. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's yeah, I don't have a That's funny quip, quip for this one, but yes, yeah, uh, Secret of uh, Albania. Let's put it at six. I'm sad. It's a good song. But uh, Netherlands. Yes, Netherlands. I have Greece. This one is my guilty pleasure, and I don't even feel uh, ashamed about it. It's Cro uh, Cloaca Croatia. Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Portugal. That makes me happy, Lewis. You're safe for now. Uh. Top yeah, I put five. Iceland at five. I'm, I might be biased, but I have Iceland okay. at five. I think it's I think it's maybe too high, but okay. I, I think it's fair enough to be biased to watch my, yeah. my six points will go to Greece. Don't worry, Sindri. I also have Iceland here. Ah. Right. Uh for me it's six points to Ukraine. Right. I've just realized that the Spotify playlist is missing a song. So I'm for, for my sake, I'm going to skip to my top four. Uh, so you all go back to yourselves, and then I'm going to figure out okay. which song I missed. <laughs> uh, work, Diva. Yeah. Okay. Four. Um, seven seven yeah. points, Cindy. My, my next one, I hope, will go really deep. Uh, it's the Netherlands. Nice, nice. Okay. It should be thrown in the deep end of a pool. Um, my, <laughs> my, my seven points will be going to Albania. That was harsh. Sad. I apologize, Netherlands. Sadness, but okay. Um, I'm ready for the show. Seven points to Denmark. Instead of me, I eat veggies and pussy. It's Latvia. Yay! Yeah. I actually love that. <laughs> okay, Lewis, what's your top four? Or your fourth? My top my fourth is Stefania. Um, Ukraine. Work. All right. Eight yeah, points. My my next one, I'm I'm anticipating feeling very sentimental about this in the future. <laughs> Uh, it's Lithuania. Good. My eight points go to J Ukraine. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Sindri, you and I are kind of in sync. I also have Lithuania. Wow. I'm ready for the show, Denmark. Yay! <laughs> Makes me happy. Uh, in my eight. Is it eight points? Yes. yes. Third place. <laughs> Second. Is it? 
Yay! Oh, yeah. One of y'all, one of y'all did not disappoint me with your ranking, and it's Lewis in this exact moment. Not with Bulgaria or Slovenia or Norway, but in this moment, I'm fine. <laughs> Ten points. All right. This next one, I'd I'd be happy to die with this song playing. It's Greece. Okay. Uh, my 10 points will be going to Portugal. My 10 points also go to Portugal. I'm going to actually just switch what my top two are going to be. So in second, giving 10 points is going to be uh, Austria. And I'm basing that off of the studio version because... Uh, Compl completely valid. <laughs> um, my second place I gave to Boys, Don't Boys Do Cry. I um, swear to fuck. Oh my god. You need to listen to the songs a second yeah, time. I don't think you were here. Yeah, you weren't here when we talked about that one. That was a brutal conversation. Um, he also wasn't here for Bulgaria, so it's fine. No, um, he came at Bulgaria. No, he came at uh, Netherlands. Oh, that's so wait. true. Yeah. yeah. Sendry, yeah. I just realized you're number one, and it makes me very happy. Yeah, it's Portugal. Yeah. Yay! I said earlier that yeah, I'm France very happy with that too. Number one, but um, honestly, looking at it, uh, I don't think France would have been above either Greece or Portugal or even Lithuania. So it would have probably been like fourth or fifth. Yay. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, my 12 points go to uh, Lithuania. But no one is going to be surprised that I give 12 points to Albania. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's no secret that I love this song too. Yay! <laughs> okay, my... 12 points, and I'm trying to figure out which one I missed. But anyway, my 12 points is uh, Die Together. Okay. That's a, that's a good choice, Who too. Who did that's you a good miss? One. I'm kind of... I'm trying to figure that out now. Oh, I'll go through. Give me a second. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Not the... You missed Austria. Austria. Austria, yeah. Which one's Austria? <laughs> yeah. Halo. Um, it's uh, Halo. Yeah, it's called Halo. Oh, how did I miss that? Um, Halo. Okay, based on, I mean, based on studio, I probably would put it at five. But then, based on performance, it's probably going all the way down. So, so where are you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, my love? Yeah, let's just fit it into the. Yeah, let's fill it, fill the gap. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well. That's that. Um, a lot more similarities than I honestly expected us to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I love, I love this because it, I, I, I'm a big fan of this. But yeah, that's, that's that. Okay, we I, did it. And it's not almost, a three hour video. <laughs> almost though. Almost. <laughs> And the next one's going to be even worse because I think we have six or seven people for the next round. So, Yay. Oh, wow. But Fun. with that, thank you all so much for joining us for semifinal one. There are going to be uh, timestamps in the description. So hopefully you didn't watch this <laughs> whole video. Um, but uh, thank you all so much for joining us, Eris, Lewis, Sindri. Always a pleasure to have y'all here. It's the one thing that makes it fun to be a European. <laughs> sure. Completely. Or Australia. Fair enough. Or <laughs> America has a song contest now, so America. Ooh. I still need to catch up on it. It's pretty decent so far. But um, with that, make sure to follow all of our lovely uh, guest panelists uh, on Twitter. All those links will be below. Make sure to follow us, because uh, Sam and I are pretty great too. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter as well at the Cup of Reality for all of the most up to date cup news. Subscribe, like, and share on the way out. And cheers to you all. I feel the same. Woo. Yes. Bye bye now. Goodbye. Oh, so Goodbye. Bye bye. Are you still here? Stain Ranella Hayati for clear skin. Is this Goodbye. Your